<laughs> this one. Hello. <laughs> I'm back. For some reason, my mic wasn't, uh, it was on, but it wasn't hooked up via the OBS, so I don't know what happened. But we're here now, and yes, um, <laughs> You know, every everything's under the weather today. Hello, hello. Let me try this again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. How are we doing? I can't breathe out of my face. <laughs> I am congested as fuck. But I have lozenges or strepsils. I got my honey lemon hot water concoction. And you know, Frankly, I'm kind of over being ill. Like I said, sick and tired of being sick and tired. But yeah, so, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. And to be fair though, I did say this and I did say to you, it usually does take me when I do get ill. I don't get ill often, not to toot my own horn. Um, but no, I don't often. But then when I do, I'm usually out for the count for about a week and I feel like the scratch like it started first with like a scratchy throat and so the scratchy throat situation started probably I want to say like Tuesday um my sister-in-law doesn't know this but I'm low-key blaming her for me getting sick because <laughs> we went out for dinner with them not this past Saturday but the Saturday before that and she was just like getting over something. She wasn't testing positive for anything or whatever, but she still had like a bit of a cough or like whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. And then, you know, my throat started to feel a bit tickly and I was like, maybe, you know, it's just cause the weather has been dumb and like the fan has been on. So maybe I'm dried out, whatever. Um, and then, yeah, the throat was scratchy a bit, whatever. And I was like, listen, I'm not fucking about for our anniversary party on Thursday. So I think the pure adrenaline, I was like downing honey with cinnamon to get some antibacterial effects, pumping myself full of lem sips and who knows what. And so we got through Thursday and that was awesome, guys. It was amazing. If you weren't there, I think the VOD is still available. Please check that out if you want. It was so much fun. Um, still reeling from that. And so then, that was great. Thursday, I took Shadow on a big old adventure into the park, got home and was like, okay, the sickness has officially come for me. The, it's, it is, it has happened. I have succumbed, um, which is annoying, but, um, yeah. So, you know, I, I tried my best to be, you know, a lazy POS. For the weekend, you know, tried my best to be, keep still, do things. Liam was in charge of all the shadow walks and stuff over the weekend. Um, but yeah, we're still not out of the woods yet. But I still, you know, I missed you guys. You know, we canceled Friday stream. I was like, I want to be back here doing the things. So we're going to push through. <laughs> Despite the fact that, you know, this, this is congested. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you, thank you so much, Saul. How are you doing? How was everyone's weekend? Like I said, I, I tried to do as little as possible. Um, I don't know if too, like, I also did a bit of running, running, running around today, um, which was needed. So Shadow um, had a grooming appointment today, so I had to take him to that. And then while he was getting groomed, I did like a quick grocery run. So I've like, you know, been outside and doing the things more than I have the last few days. So I'm not as tired as I thought I would be though, despite having to get out in the world and socialize. Um, but yeah, I masked up though. Cause I was like, I'm not, I don't want to give everyone my lurgies and stuff. Especially cause like, especially the grocery store around the morning, it's all the like little bitties. And I'm like, I don't want to give you my germs guys. I do not. So I decided not to, <laughs> but it's good. Shadow looks freaking adorable. I have to post it later, but I took a photo of him 
right when he when we got back in the car after his groom and he looks like the way he did when he was a puppy and i couldn't handle it i was like you're so freaking cute and i can't i can't even i truly cannot um he's downstairs snoozing but he was a very good boy he's such a drama queen you know so we always get to the groomer and he's always like whining he's like no i don't want to be here but whatever like it's exciting but it's also weird and whatever right as soon as i leave him he's like oh yeah i like getting pampered i like being treated like a little princess you know so that's what he's doing <laughs> weekend flew by went from meeting to recording wow yeah then editing that's amazing though that's gonna be so nice now that all of that's done all the editing is done now you can just like have a chill time you don't have to worry until until the big day which is very exciting but if you guys don't remember this is our final craft kit so we are finally craft kitting we're at the final stretch this is the final craft kit this is an embroidery kit this is the final craft kit of kits of crafts that i have never done before because I was thinking about this, I still have two outstanding cross stitch kits. So theoretically, the kits keep coming and they don't stop coming. But in the Tasha has never done this task before, this is the last one. Though I had some time to kill while I was waiting for Shadow to finish at the groomer because I had finished at the grocery store. So I was poodling around hobby craft and I was looking at all the craft kits and uh, seeing what other craft kits I might be interested in trying. Cause there's some craft kits that I'm like, I don't know, I think this is ugly. So I don't know if I want to do that. Like I can't get into the macrame stuff. I don't know what it is. Like just chunky floofs of yarn just hanging on spools. I'm not a fan. I can't get into it. So there's certain ones that I'm like, oh, I could buy a craft kit, um, but it needs to be the right kit. You know what I mean? yeah it's not the end you know also too it's like literally almost march in two weeks less than two weeks it's gonna be march which is wild um and that's my birthday month so who knows maybe more craft kits will be acquired during the birth month but who knows so if you guys remember last time this is this is the pattern this is the pattern that we're doing we have to figure out the best system for this i think this will go in here in a minute and we will rearrange for now things are a bit wonky and you guys are just gonna have to we're sure though <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely so but there are some ones like there's some interesting ones and stuff i was also looking at knitting stuff because you know now now we sort of kind of know how to knit so I'm like, maybe I get a knitting pattern, even though I wasn't sure if I was going to do that. <laughs> but we'll see. So what we're going to do today is we're going to practice making the various stitches that are needed to achieve this project. So we went over them, not last week, but the week before on the Friday after we finished our punch needle. Um, and we learned that there was a few different stitches we were going to be doing two of which i have done before within cross stitch but some that i have never done so we figured the best thing to do would be to do that first test our ability to do the stitches and then once we're comfortable with that then we can actually move on to doing the pattern practice makes perfect so we're going to be attempting the back stitch today which I do know how to do. I think the thing that will be the difficult part about this is making the stitches even, but then I also don't know how much it matters if they're even. I was thinking about that last night. I'm like, I don't know how much that matters, but we'll see. And then the satin stitch just seems to be like the fill in the, the back stitch stitch. So you're just like weaving, I think, up and down. Sure it comes up in the outline of the shape you're stitching yeah yeah so we're just like making parallel lines which is fine 
I assume though, because this one is like, oh, make sure you go up to the other one. So I don't know. We'll see. Again, this is why we're practicing French knots. I know how to do French knots, but I hate French knots. But we are still going to practice because, again, I don't like them. Because I never find they do well. Long and short stitch. This seems to be something to do with, like, color texture stuff. Um, which is cool. So hopefully by the end of that, we've achieved something like this. Remember, you can determine how much. Yeah, so it's similar. A lot of these stitches are very similar. It's just like how you use them. The fishbone stitch is another one. What is it? The lazy daisy stitch is then the last, is the last one or the one before that? We'll see. Yeah, so that's it. So, first things first. I'm the realist. We need to hook this up. It'll be the return of the um, hoop holder. It first made its appearance during the punch needle segment. But remember, the punch needle was too heavy for its own good. Also, speaking of which, you know how I had beef with our punch needle thing? Because I was like, the tautness of the canvas gets compromised while you're punching because it's the canvas is attached to this metal or not metal this wooden frame and the wooden frame is like in the way and stuff and it caused problems do you remember that and i was like it would be dumb why isn't it in a hoop so then it's easier to control well when i was at hobby craft today looking at their craft kits didn't i come across their punch needle kits and they have changed them and guess what they have now they contain hoops so clearly the Hobbycraft universe, the Hobbycraft gods, heard my pleas, heard my what is this bullshit, and they have amended their practices. You can actually buy the frame, just the blank canvas, like the one that we got in the kit that's attached to the wooden frame, because I think they were like, we have all these kits and we have to get rid of them. Let's just sell the punch, like that part separately. But yeah, so clearly they learned that. They knew that that was a problem as well. So that was good. I was like, see you guys. So yeah, my pleas had been answered. I don't know if we'll punch needle again. Again, if you guys don't remember, that was the most labor intensive craft we have done thus far. This one, I assume will be simple enough because we've already kind of done this before. Um, because it's the it's like kindred spirit to cross stitch there are cross stitch like there's embroidery techniques in cross stitch hence the back stitching and the french knots because we've already done that um so i think hopefully hopefully knock on wood this will be relatively straightforward i think the biggest thing again will just be like following the pattern and making sure you get because it's a bit more like it kind of like embroidery to me feels a little bit more like drawing um and cross stitch feels a little bit more like color by numbers so it just kind of feels a little bit harder to me okay i'm back i just told my boss everything that has happened in my life in the past month because i forgot my medication this morning oh no <laughs> oh no no <laughs> So you're going through it. How was your week, Kat? Is everything all good with your mom? How's the host like how was the hospital situation? Hello, hello. You were like, um, I'm on a, a potential ADHD spiral right now, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Good numbers are going. Well. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's good to know. That's good to know. Good to hear. Okay, we are now going to attempt to backstitch, which I already have done quite frequently before in the past, so yeah, I didn't know if my little over-the-counter meds did anything with my concentration, but boy, how do, do they ever? Yeah, it's always one of those things, eh? And that's one of those things that I, like, similarly to, um, like, antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds, 
where a lot of times you'll hear people that are like, well, I feel happier, like I feel better now, so I stopped taking them, and then they felt like shit again, and you're like, yeah, that's because the meds were working. But see, it's good, at least now you know, and you're like, well, shit, <laughs> I better make sure. That's so frustrating though, especially if you're like, now I need to try to be a productive member of society, and my brain is literally all over the place. Okay, how? What, what is the thickness of the yarn that we're meant to be using? Do, 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 do. Okay, fabric is done. I need to figure out one strand for the body outlines, spiders and back, two strands of black for the top infill, flower stalk, black leaves, and black inside the flowers. Work with two strands of thread for both oranges. Okay, let me just... So, from my understanding, the back stitch, body outline, spiders and bat. Body outline, spiders and bats, they want us to use one thread. Cool, cool, cool. Two strands for the infill, which looks like it's just back stitching. Oh no, B is satin stitch. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Whatever. So one one thread for back stitching. That's all I want to know. I just want to make sure that we're practicing with the cut with the thickness that we're gonna be using for the remainder of the project. This is a real long thing of thread. Okay, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Wow, okay. They they were like, no, I'm gonna give you one long ass bit of thread. Okay. Usually they cut them <laughs> in these kits. That's okay, that's okay. That's why we have scissors. The one thing I'm most excited about with embroidery for some silly reason is the fact that I get to do knots. Cause like in cross stitch, well, I don't know, I feel like you probably could get away with doing knots on stuff, but you don't need to. Like there's a, you can stitch in a way that doesn't require the use of knots. But the fact that embroiderer is like, yeah, make a knot in your thread. I'm like, oh wow, I can do that, okay. So that's what we're gonna do. But yeah, Shadow's asleep downstairs after his grooming appointment. So we'll see if he comes up to say hi later. <laughs> um, he got like a little, doggy it was like half price for like the bougie doggy spa treatment thing so i was like yeah sure whatever let's do it get him pampered he doesn't get groomed very often and um it came with a free i don't use not more in cross stitch and the stress of me out yeah oh really did you use to knot with your cross stitches there is you there is a level of trust you need with like the crosses, like the crosses that you do, and then also with the fact that like if you do catch the back of it. Yeah, oh that's interesting. I also mean like I'm sure it works either way, you know? I don't know why, like I don't know who the authority was to be like, oh we don't need to make knots. Cause I assume, I guess the only problem it would be is like if you're framing something and you don't like, I don't know if knots would cause bumps in the back of your fabric, but I feel like sometimes it, like, I don't know, it's too thick, I would think, for that to be a thing. Maybe, I'm not sure. Okay, let's, we're just getting this up. But yeah, so the, um, the doggy spa treatment ends with, um, they get like a free dog, like a free bandana afterwards to go on their collar. But we always, cause Shadow wears a harness and he has like a Martindale collar. So it's not one that like clasps on and off. So when we go to the groomer, um, we just have his harness on and not his collar. They both have tags on them. So it's not a huge deal. Um, just because it's just easier. And um, you got pressured into doing this other thing. Oh, what'd you get pressured into doing? Was this on top of on top of the the Pokemon that you're currently making? What did you get pressured into? Okay, let's backstitch, friends. We're testing our ability to do this. 
I think the main thing is the trying to make lines that are similar. So I'm just going through. Sorry. Oh, you feel like you can't use knots. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. Do you feel like, yeah, there was almost like a, like you got like shunned by the fact that you were making knots in your cross stitches. But again, I genuinely don't know if it fucks up the back of the fabric. If it doesn't, I don't see why it matters. Okay. So if you guys don't, if anyone has ever not done a back stitch before, the way it works, let's say you, you pop up and then, so this is point number one, right? And then point number two goes forward so that's like your one stitch and then you go like so that's point number one you can't see here this is this is point number one this is point number two and then you're actually gonna go behind it still kind of maintaining a straight line but you're gonna be a bit in front of it I'm also trying to make this and you're essentially like weaving back on yourself I'm probably not explaining this very well, um, but just trust me on this. I don't know. If you, it makes it kind of lumpy to put it in a frame. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if you, I feel like you should be able to do whatever makes the most sense to you. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. Probably not. But see, there's a little gap here. So, that was point, stitch point one. Over here, above that is stitch point two. But then behind stitch one and two is stitch number three. So it's all the way back here. And then stitch number four, or dot number four or whatever, is actually going into the back of stitch number one. And you guys are like, that's confusing as hell. I don't understand. And then that's how you backstitch. But you can't really tell on this, can you? Just trust me on this. I saw a TikTok about using your sewing machine as an embroidery machine. With oh, yeah, that would be cool. Okay, let's try this again. So, like I said, you're basically like creating a little space from the back of your last stitch, and then you're closing that gap, and then that's how you do a back stitch again. I don't know if I'm explaining it properly, but just trust me. So I think we know how to, we know how to backstitch you guys. Backstitching, we got this. We know what we're doing. We have an understanding. This is how backstitching works. Let's just... And then... The stitch we need to again this sort of makes sense to me again I don't know if you can see on this one where it's like see there is stitch one and then you move up here that stitch two and then you don't see this under the fabric it goes all the way over here for stitch three and then stitch four and by stitch I mean holes I guess holes in the fabric so first hole second hole third hole and then the fourth hole is actually the first hole and then you kind of keep doing that over and over again Sort of going like this. You're kind of going counterclockwise constantly. Counterclockwise? No, you're going clockwise constantly. Back stitching. <laughs> and then the next one we have to do is the satin stitch, which seems like we're just again doing back stitch loops, but then just like slowly moving them over every time. That seems to be what's happening. So let's just finish this up here. We might as well make a little... Actually, I actually have a new fabric marker. Maybe I should test out the fabric marker. This could be a bad idea. But then we can label the different stitches we're doing. So then everybody will know. And by everybody, I mean me, myself, and I. Watch these be really chunky. They probably are. Let me just. Yeah, it's pretty chunky, but that's okay. 
that's right. Back. Stitch. On there. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll finish back stitching the length of the word back stitch that I just wrote. And then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Hey man, I'm I'm not I don't mind your paragraphs. I have a crafting table in the loft at my mom's house, but it was brought with me to craft up there. Oh yeah. Yeah, you wanna take the craft table? But it's one of those where it's kind of like you would rather who knows, right? Because it could be one of those things where like you're like it might be sad but it's one of those where it's not being used so you would almost like have to frame it like at least it's going somewhere where it's gonna be used versus just like sitting up there with a bunch of crap all over it also by the way congratulations on the fact that you got approval and you guys are gonna be moving out soon that's so incredible you need face yeah exactly but yeah so exciting do you have an official date for when you're moving out and also how far away is it from your mom's yeah you do it's so awesome april 1st that's awesome so that's not too bad it's far enough away to give you your space but close enough that if you need to go back and check up on her and make sure everything is okay then you're able to which is awesome so the thing that i don't really know because obviously i've made a have made a knot here i guess the way you make knots is again just sort of like putting them in on themselves like this eh actually i don't know i find it helps to put another needle by where you want the knot to end up and then that seems to help it do its thing in the right place i also might need to be gross for a second later and blow my nose because i can feel my sinuses draining as we speak and she goes back to work it yeah oh that'll be nice yeah just general chat for sure yeah that's what i'm thinking Ooh, there it is oh so I think I told, I don't know if I told you guys this, where we went for a walk with my mother-in-law a couple weekends ago and she was saying how she said for sure. And then her, my father-in-law was like, oh, you've obviously been hanging out with Tash a lot because you've started saying for sure. And I was like, do I say that all the time? And now every time I say for sure, like Liam calls me out on it. And then we're also noticing like a bunch of other streamers and people that we watch also say for sure. And now we're not sure if it's a Canadian thing, like a North American thing, like a 90s, 2000s kid thing. So I guess apparently British people don't say for sure all the time is what I'm learning now. Um... But yeah, so now every time I say it, I'm like consciously aware of how often I say for sure all the time. Hmm. So maybe it is a Canadian thing. But we'll see. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's interesting. I don't know who else. <laughs> Any other for sureers? And again, too, I don't even know. Because I feel like I also would say definitely as well. But now I'm thinking, I guess I don't. I say for sure all the time. Okay, let me be gross for a second and attempt to blow my nose. I'll mute you guys just so I'm not subjecting you to the bullshit. Just give me a second. Also get some hand sanitizer so I can sanitize my gross ass hand. Nothing even came out. That's the worst thing when your sinuses are inflamed.
is like I can feel how congested I am but it's like up here it's like past the point where it would like drip down my face you know what I mean anyway sorry that's TMI I'm like I can't breathe out my face <laughs> yeah I do have like a nose spray that I've been using um, and that does help a little bit for sure again for sure <laughs> now I'm like so hyper aware of it now Yeah, I have like a Vicks vapor spray, saline nose spray. And then we got like, I took like a, this brand called Sudafed, so it's like a decongestant tablet. So I've done that. Um, what else? I've been drinking a lot of liquids, a lot of soups. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just been trying to do all the things in like different rotations and helping for the best. Let me remember, okay, so satin stitch, AKA the filling in of the things. And it's strong, apparently America has a different type of suit. Really, oh, to be fair though, honestly, that's one of my complaints. And I get it, you know, maybe the UK, like people aren't running around with like opioid addictions, like they are back in my hometown. But like the drugs here are weak sauce. They're so hyper-regulated and I'm like, I need the good goods. I need my North American, like, knock me the fuck out and let me wake up 12 hours later feeling refreshed. That, that shit doesn't happen here. That's the one thing that I'm like, nope. You make me suffer a lot longer. Okay. Two strands for the back of the, t for the top infill. So infill, I'm assuming, is what this is. That is true, actually. That's fair. You're like, um, we need over-the-counter shit that will stop us racking up exorbitant amount of medical debt. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Absolutely. Back into the flowers. Okay, well, what is- what- what- what strands are we using? Oh, two strands for both oranges. Which is the- See, they're using different terms for different things and it's making me confused. So the oranges are all requiring two strands. Okay, cool. And then everything else. So I think back stitching is the only one that wants one strand and then everything else is two strands. Okay. Cool. Okay, okie dokes. Yeah, why is it? It's meant, K. Okay. It's meant to be chill piano music. I don't know how chill this is. It's also called Colorful Riot, which again, isn't very chill. Usually chill piano is my jam and I get really excited that it's happening. But this one is not, it's not it, guys. Since when did chill piano not become the vibe? This is a bit better. This is, this is less. Yeah, right? Let's get out of that. There's nothing chill about scary game vibes. Get that shit out of here. Okay. We're going to now satin stitch with two strands of thread. And the cool thing about one strand of thread is that to make it two strands, you can just fold that shit in half. So we're gonna do that and then we're going to tie a knot in the two strands and now we got two strands. Math. I don't like math, but I, I like this kind of math. Ah, oh, you know what I forgot to tell you guys? I forgot to tell you guys about my sensory deprivation float adventure on Wednesday because I was so like, focused and in party celebratory celebratory mode on Thursday and I was gonna tell you guys on Friday but then you know I was out for the count so because I told you how oh please tell us <laughs> I know you're not being sarcastic but it sounds like you're dripping with sarcasm and it's making me laugh um but anyway so it's a saga it is a saga but like not really basically what had happened was I met Liam after work for um, 
for dinner. So we're like, okay, cool. <laughs> um, we'll go for dinner first, you know, cause I think the float wasn't until 8.30. So it was like, okay, cool. I'll meet you down at your plate, like down in your neck of the woods by your office around six. We'll have dinner at 6.30. That gives us like an hour and a half to eat food. And then we can go like walk over to the, to the place and it'll be great, right? So we do that and then we go to this Thai food place. Wow, this is this is really big here. And it's really nice. Like it looks really nice, it looks really good. So we're sitting there and we order our food. We're like, perfect, this is gonna be great. And we're thinking about um, the last time we went out and it was like just the two of us. Cause we've done a couple dinners, but like it's been with family and whatever. And we're like, damn, like when's the last time we did this? Um, it was when we went out for our anniversary and I told you guys how I almost got gluten twice in one evening because the restaurant kept fucking up our orders and we like, they messed them up so much that we ended up being late to see the Bob's Burgers movie and it was absolute carnage, chaos, ridiculousness. And we were like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Ha ha ha, like that's so funny. Well, soon enough we realized, yeah, this is why we don't go out because it took over an hour for our food to arrive to the point where I think we got our starters and we were like, we're waiting for our mains. And even the server is like looking at our table being like, why the fuck don't they have their food yet? I don't understand. And me and Lee were sitting there being like, we need to haul ass across the Thames to get to the other side of the bridge to go to this appointment where we're gonna like float out and hang out and stuff. And it's Thai food. Thankfully, I was smart enough to not get the three chili hot Thai food. I just got pad Thai. Cause I was really like, oh, this one looks really good. It sounds really nice. Um, but I was like, ooh, it's three chili peppers strong. I don't know if I can handle that. And it's a good thing that I didn't because I had to inhale my food in like five minutes because basically they kept coming over and they're like, oh, where's your food? And you're like, you tell me fam, like, where's our food? <laughs> and then finally, Liam's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. When I'm done, if the food's not there, like we need to go, we'll just pay for the sides, like pay for the start or whatever, fuck it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We've eaten something, it's fine. So then this guy, this person comes over and is like, I'm really sorry guys, like your food, like we don't know what's going on. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But like, if it doesn't come out now, like we just need to go, we're sorry. And of course, sure enough, the food is coming out literally as we're like, we need to go. And they're like, do you want us to like pack it up into go containers or whatever? And we're like, it's fine. We'll just sit here and literally like vacuum inhale it in five minutes and then we'll go. But then they were really nice about it. And they gave us like, they comped the starter for free and then gave us a server's discount. So the meal was like half off. Plus we didn't pay for the starter. So unlike the almost glutening me twice experience, we would actually go back to this restaurant despite the fact that they were like really bad with their service. We would give them another chance. But yeah, so every time, every time, two is a pattern, it's not really, but it seems like every time Liam and I decide to have a cute little date night, we end up rushing to the thing we're trying to do because the food gets messed up. So we haul ass to the float. And this whole time guys, what's been happening for you know the last few days is I've had Rihanna stuck in my head because I watched her Super Bowl performance afterwards. And basically, and they're not even actually really Rihanna songs. One's a Kanye song, one's a Jay-Z song, but my brain has had either all of the lights or run this town in my brain all week. And so we finally get to the float. The guy gives us the spiel. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, cool. I've done one of these before, like whatever. Liam and I high five, go to our respective pod rooms. We're like, see on the flip side when you've had, you know, like a grand, experience you know and so you get into this pod they give you earplugs and they also give you vaseline because they're like if you have any cuts or things on your hands or on your body put vaseline over it because obviously the water you're floating in, in order to give you a sense of buoyancy is like super super concentrated um salt water oh got a poop brb <laughs> thank you so much for the follow honestly same sometimes i appreciate that name <laughs> gastrointestinal problems say what um but yeah so i'm like yeah yeah okay cool i don't think i have any cuts on my body it's fine you jump in the shower hose off get into the pod and then my hands start burning because it turns out that my dry ass hands have tiny little micro cuts all over them it wasn't bad i could push through it but they just started like low level burning and i was like 
oh, that's fun. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and so, but the float was fine. So basically what happens is you get in, the water is meant to be like bathroom temperature, like quite warm. Yeah, you'd have to just like cover your whole body in Vaseline, I guess. <laughs> just like slippery seal, you know, cover yourself in it. Um, and so you're lying in there and you get to the tub and you have a little like donut floaty thing for your head. Cause guys, I don't know if you realize, but heads are freaking heavy. So in order to stop your head from like going too far back into the salt water, you have like a little, a little donut pillow. So you're lying there, you're chilling. Um, and there's a light. So you have the option. So you get into the pod, there's a light on the side. You can turn the light on or off, or you can keep the light on or you know, whatever. And then you close the pod and it's like hydraulic stuff. If you get a bit too hot, you could crack it, but it like ruins the, you know, the sensory deprivation of it all. And then you have a spray bottle on the side in case any of the salt water like gets on your face and you accidentally rub your face and get salt in your eyes. So you have spray bottle and then you have an emergency button to call for attendance if you're like freaking out and stuff, right? So cool, get in there. And then there's music playing for the first like five minutes. So you get in, lay down, you're floating. I turn the light off, close the thing. So it's pitch black and then there's music, right? And the music's happening and you're like, okay, cool. We're vibing out. And then the music stops and all I can hear is my heart like boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> Interesting. But it wasn't bad. Like, honestly, I just like was floating, vibing out. And it gets to that point where um, you got yourself a 3D resin printer. That's amazing. That's so awesome, Mr. Dragon Lord. Liam has a PLA printer, but he's always wanted a resin one. You'll have to let me know how that goes. That's awesome. But yeah, but so yeah, you're just lying there and you're chilling. And it's really funny because every once in a while, like I would pick different positions to float in because you're just kind of floating. And then you're just like, okay. So I would like, I was floating sort of like starfish because they're quite big, right? So you like move your arms, you kind of see where things are and then you're floating. And then obviously, cause you don't know what's going on. At one point you're just kind of floating and then your like hand grazes the side of the pod and you're like, oh fuck, I'm, I've reached the side of the pod. And you keep going and you're like, okay, whatever. And then your like toe hits the end of the pod. So you're just kind of floating and bobbing and kind of don't know what direction you're floating in. Um, but yeah, but then it's kind of like, you're just kind of sitting there. And so then I'm like, okay, what, what, what's it like if I float with my hands above my head? What's it like if I float with my hands out to the side? What's it like? And you're just kind of doing these things and I'm floating and vibing out. But then of course guys, so like, this is picture this, right? So I'm sitting there, I'm floating, my eyes are closed. I'm like, whatever, this is great. And my brain is like, it's the theme, like the jingle from all of the lights that Rihanna sang at the Super Bowl. So I'm just vibing. And then there's like a giant horn section happening in my brain while I'm meant to be like meditating. And I'm like, hey man, whatever. We're just going to go with it. It was birthday on Saturday. That's amazing. <laughs> middle age. What's what's middle age? Please explain. <laughs> Pete stumbles into chat. Absolutely. Hey Pete, how you doing? I'm just recounting my sensory deprivation flotation experience and how I just had all of the lights in my brain. Oh, welcome to the 30 club friend. Middle age, that means you're only supposed to be hanging out in the world until 60? Damn, that's not middle age. Middle age is like 60. You're quarter age. You're a quarter age, Mr. Dragon Lord. Don't let them think that. Don't, don't think that. <laughs> but yes, hello, hello, Pete. How are you doing? How are things? Did you have a good weekend? Um, but yeah. So it was all right. And then at the end we got out, you know, as soon as it was interesting though, because, um, like as you get to a point where you're kind of like, damn, like, okay, I've been floating. I've been vibing out. Like everything is great. I'm kind of like getting done. You know, like, I think I've reached the end of this. I have no idea how much time has passed. Right. But then the music comes back on in the last five minutes. So the music comes back on and you're like, Shit, that's good. My, my internal body clock was being like, I think I'm done. And then the pod was like, that's right. It's time to get out now. And I'm like, cool, perfect. 
Pete, you say that, but by the end of next month, we will be the same age. And so if you call yourself old, then that means you're calling me old and I'm going to take offense. Just kidding. I'm not because I love getting older. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, we can was okay. Went to the pub on Sunday. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, guys, we need to satin stitch. Let's stop fucking about. We need to learn how to do some of these things. But yeah, no, things have been good. Um, I am ill. I cannot, you know, my, my, my nose is congested. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. But um, aside from, you know, trying to do absolutely as little as possible over the weekend, things were all right. <laughs> okay. So I need to bring my needle straight up through the fabric, create a straight stitch, bring the needle back down. Right next to it. Yeah, okay. That seems fine. That just seems to be like we are just doing this. Um, but yeah, so things have been, things have been good. So let's, so at the end of it though, so of course at the end of the stitch, you get out, you shower off. And actually I was quite impressed with, cause they provide you with, um, like shampoo and conditioner and stuff like that. And I'm always comparing it to like when you go to a hotel and they give you like the really crappy, um, uh, which I'm gonna call it it's like shampoos and stuff like that and so I was like I don't know how like you know if this is gonna be any good but like because this is some natural beauty health spa place their toiletries were like really nice so that they got a point for me for that and they also offered you tea so you got tea there was like a chill zen room and they had like a hair dry slash hair straightening room after you finished your shower and got out and could like chill and finish getting ready for the rest of the day um, but at the end of it, so I met Liam out in the chill relaxation zone and I was like, oh, how did you find it? You know, did you have like a big epiphany, a big, you know, interpersonal awakening or whatever? And he's like, nah, it was all right. <laughs> I think he's realizing like, you know, any sort of meditative spa experience that involves water, like floats or baths or hot tubs or whatever. He's like, meh, I don't like getting all pruney and stuff. And I'm like, honestly, that's fair. So basically what we've distilled is that, you know, if you've never had like a meditation experience, you've never tried meditation and you don't have an aversion of like, you know, claustrophobia or water or any of that kind of stuff, the sensory deprivation pods are a good way to get you into that headspace to start like tuning out the world, right? Because they literally make you tune it out. Because with like meditation and stuff, right, you're supposed to like, you know, focus on your breathing and like, you know, not sort of like pay attention to what's going on around you and stuff like that. Um, and so I feel like if people have never done that, that's a good way to facilitate that. But he was like, not for me. And I'm like, that's fine. We then did that. <laughs> you better if you're, yeah, honestly, that's true. That's true. Absolutely. Okay, so this appears to be the satin stitch, which is basically me just making a bunch of straight stitches and putting them close enough together that it like fills something in. So I'd say we know what we're doing in that respect. I guess what we can try though, is obviously we can try doing then these stitches on top of each other just to make sure that, you know, it looks kind of legit. But yeah. You almost had that, ooh, and then a bear attacked it. Excuse me? I almost passed out in the last hot tub I was in and then a bear attacked it about an hour after that. I'm sorry, what, what sort of B-level action horror film did you stumble into, Cat, for that to have happened to you? That's wild. That is absolutely wild. Yeah, that's wild. You're like, nope, never again, please. And I would, I would respect that. Okay, so let's maybe do this from here. And let the stairs up. Yeah, that's wild. Quite literally. Yeah, I would not, I wouldn't be down. Was it cold out? Was the bear trying to warm up? Like, geez. B, 
be at. To be fair, I've not been in a hot tub in a hot minute. Um, pun intended. Because I, too, have also... I don't know, not as much anymore, but I used to have a really bad time with them. Um, I was K. I was literally K thinking of the same thing. I was like, um, excuse me? I'm pretty sure that Cocaine Bear movie is coming out, and that seems like some shit the Cocaine Bear would do. <laughs> absolutely how are you doing yeah honestly it's like one of the only few super original movies that are coming out right now i think it's gonna take on like sharknado level cult classic you know that's what i'm thinking okay i think This we have to get a bit closer in terms of like the gap. You guys can't see this. I'm sorry. I really, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Can we, can we try and make it so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing? That I've just made it worse. I'm trying to get schedules sorted out. Schedules for like work, for life. The tea party went really well, Pete. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it was, it was very good. We party, we tea partied hard. Um, there are still, I think there's three cupcakes left now after all of the cupcakes and cookies that I made in anticipation for the event. Um, but yeah. The house we stayed in was so scary. It was still to the mountain. It was super windy one night. I told Chris if we die in the cabin, I'm gonna be pissed. It reminds me of that. Isn't there that one? Oh, what's that video game? <sighs> that has. Uh, I don't know. It's the one with Hayden Panettiere and Rami Malik. Like, choose your own adventure cabin in the woods kind of shit. That's what that reminds me of. Mm, yes, all of that. Yeah, no, honestly, Pete, it's not a problem. Never ever apologize for needing to take care of yourself. Truly, truly. Until Dawn, that's the one, Saul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, that's what that reminded me of. Until Dawn. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, things went very well. Um, we did a lot of singing. My mom stopped by. My mom, uh, and then, and then the chat disappeared. She disappeared the chat and didn't know what she did. And so I have to teach her how to fix that once I figure out what to do. Less murder, more bears. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, no, don't, don't worry. Do not fret. You know, you got to take care of yourself first. And also to, you know, just showing up for one event doesn't, you know, matter in the grand scheme of things. You are here quite consistently and that matters more to me than just, you know, popping by for a party. So if you were able to come, I appreciate you. If you were not able to come, I'm glad you're here now. You know, it does not matter to me. Okay. We have successfully sat and stitched. What's next? Ooh, the evil French knots, you guys. The evil French knots. We hate them. Isn't that, isn't that a Smeagol thing? We hate them. Okay. Let's... But yeah, the VOD for that should still be up for the tea party. Um, but if not, it will be going on the YouTube account. I'm about two weeks out in terms of when I stream versus when they go up on my YouTube channel. But it's gonna be going up, I think, on the s on the second of March, which is wild to me that it's already gonna be March next week. There's a new cabin skin in the new really. Ooh, I like that. You know what I saw actually the other day when Liam and I went to meet with DJ Travis, we walked past the Lego store and they have a cute little like triangle cabin build, like Lego kit with like little trees and like little camper stuff. And I'm like, I like that. <laughs> I would like, I would like camper Lego set, please. <laughs> but it looked really, really cute. Okay, so now we're French knotting and we need the. Let's get a needle minder out. 
No, that's what I mean, right? Honestly, Lego kits are so expensive. I think even too, there was like almost like a very like blocky version of the Spice Girls that I thought was really cool. And even that was like 40 quid. And I was like, that's a lot. That's so much. Um, but yeah. I know. Lego kits are awesome, but they are very expensive. For real, for real. <sighs> Take a deep breath, Tasha. Breathe, even though you can't. Okay, now we're gonna French knot. So French knot is basically like strategically knotting a fabric to make it look cute. Um, and mine don't always look cute and it's really annoying. If I have all of you. Yeah. I found a hobbit hole in clearance at Walmart one year. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing, too, if you don't have the pieces. I know my uh, my in-laws have, they've, like, got a bunch of Lego. Um, but, yeah, they're currently going through the process of trying to find all of the pieces that, like, maybe go with certain kits. Because I'm sure, like, online, almost like an Instructables thing, like, you could go in and find the instructions if you've missed them, but it's finding all the pieces in and amongst, like, random other pieces. And they also found, like, random offshoot, like, things that are not, like, Lego specific. You know, they don't have the Lego symbol on them, so they're not, like, real Lego, which then further complicates the process. They just have these, like, giant Rubbermaid bins of Lego. Which, again, you know, my desire to sort, I, was they were going through it one day, and I was like, I like sorting things by color. <laughs> so I helped them for, like, two hours, just, like, sorting Lego by different colors and, like, different suspected kit types. And I had a blast. Um, no, they weren't, they were, like, small. So they were not the big, chunky Playmobiles, but they were ones that basically just kind of looked like knockoff Lego. They just didn't have the Lego logo, Lego logo, <laughs> on the little things. Yeah, I found some knockoff Lego on AliExpress. Oh yeah. Which, um, what, what was the kit of? Maybe. Yeah, Ogle, probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. Okay, let's attempt to do the bane of my existence. French knots. Actually, speaking of AliExpress, Liam ordered, so you know how, I think I showed you guys how the tree, actually, actually, hold the presses. Pete, because you have resub, you get to be added to our, to our subscriber tree. So this is one of the things that we did at the tea party that we're gonna continue. So you remember how I showed you this and how it was like Liam's gonna 3D model this and we're gonna print a bunch of like centerpieces for their wedding reception that we're gonna do? What was a coffee machine camera? That sounds really cool. That sounds really cool. But, so, you get to tell me what color you would like me to write your name on a little wooden heart and then I will add you to the subscriber tree. So I have any color that you would like. We got blues, we got pinks, we got oranges, we got purples. Um, start to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, let me know what color you would like. And also too, it was so annoying because I was going through and trying to see, find the names. Because before I used to be able to get a printout of your subscriber list because I wanted to send whispers to everybody who got gifted subs on the Thursday so that I could send them invites to the discord but I can't find that they've rearranged the back end of it so I don't know where to pop up my subscriber list so I can do that so there's just random gifted subs in the ether um that don't have hearts or invites right now but once I find them I will do that I do have green I do have green I'll write your name on here. But yes, so that is a thing now. Okay, record Pete. Excellent. Add you to the tree. Yeah, green squad. <laughs> K 
Cat is also green. Who else is green? Pete is green. Cat is green. Velvet Mermaid's like a bluey green. K is green. Friends, friends. Bring some covers. Yeah. Will it? Oh, okay. It's in the earnings. Okay. Okay. I'll have to test that out later. Thank you for that song. I figured you would know. I assumed you would have the information. <laughs> so I'll take a look at that and then I can go back in and be like, you get an invite, you get an invite, you get an invite, but I haven't had a chance to do that yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to blow my nose again, you guys. I don't even know if anything come out, but I'm going to mute this to not subject your ear holes to the grossness. Literally, okay, I'm gonna be really gross, but like literally nothing is coming out. I'm blowing my nose, even though I literally can't breathe. You know that thing? There's like the hole, <laughs> this sounds gross. You know there's like the hole that connects your nose to your mouth? That, those holes feel plugged. And that's causing problems. But then nothing is moving when I try to blow my nose. It's absolute shenanigans. But it's fine. We'll push through. <laughs> Let's French knot. Let's do the thing. Yeah. What? Sinesis? Oh, sinuses. Sinus, 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 sinus. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were telling me the name of the holes that in your mouth that connect to your nose. And I was like, that's no way in hell those, that's the names of those things. <laughs> Unless that is the name and I'm like being real weird right now. Okay, let's French knot. So what we're doing is I'm threading this. Cause I think we said, I think it wants us to do two threads. So two threads is what we will do. Mmm. Yeah, definitely. I do have, um, strepsils because my throat was also like scratchy and swollen and stuff too. But yeah, Fisherman's Friends is a good show. <laughs> to be fair, yes, question mark. I have a, no like, I have a brain full of literal snot right now, Saul, so... I, you know, on a good day, I trust everything that you say. So if you are deciding to speak nonsense, I am just likely to just believe you. I'm like, yeah, no, checks out. My brain's too full of gook to argue with you. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I, I trust, I trust and respect. <laughs> okay. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Bring the needle through the fabric. No, it does need to come up. It does need to come up. <laughs> Used to Shein tube. What? Yeah, the nose. Yeah, it is connected. But we're wondering if it does. It have a specific name? That's what's plugged. Is whatever the hell the the connection is. Okay. I think this is how we do this. I don't know how to do this with the, okay, okay. So we do this, stick this here. Stick this like here. And then we wrap this, oh no, I don't know. I don't know. I probably shouldn't have knotted this, but it's fine. One, shit, it's fine, it's fine. Two, I already don't like French knots, you guys. Okay, so we've done the three, we're holding taut, and then we pull through and keep everything taut and pull it into itself. And I don't know if this was taut enough. And I also don't know if we did this right. Oh! Wait a second. 
sort of, kind of, maybe? Nope. No, we fucked that up. <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> is it actually called that? The pharynx is the muscle, the eustachian tube? God damn. My station tubes have been clogged. Yeah, honestly, truly. Okay. I think I should not have knotted this. So we're gonna do this again. Let me let me remember vaguely. Hmm. Cause it needs something to hold on to, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay. This one really the top muscle is called the nasopharynx, middle oropharynx, and the bottom is called the laryngopharynx. God damn. Guys, guys, friends. I'm literally like, why is my brain not remembering how to do this? It can't be this easy. It can't be just like, oh, we're just gonna wrap this. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I don't know if we can do the double over in terms of this. We might have to cut it. We might have to cut this. Hmm. Hmm. That's wild. That your ears pop, cat. Okay, so we need to come up here and we need to just, let's just hold on to the back of this. Cause I feel like this needs to be anchored here somehow. This is what I'm trying to remember how this shit works. Shove this through here. Wrap this around. One. Nope. Okay. Okay. Listen. See, there was a reason I hated French knots, and now I'm like, I hate them even more now. Why do you suck so much? Why are you evil? medic yeah honestly i'm like i'm learning lots but i will retain none of it because again brain full of snot <laughs> it's not it's not gonna happen okay one two what if i just twisted it no that's not gonna work is it hmm. Hmm. once we do it this way it's only because this is getting tangled in itself and that's not gonna that's not helpful. No, it is not. Okay. I'm literally like, why does my brain not remember how? Do you? Yeah. We might need to watch a video, guys, because my brain is too full of snot <laughs> to comprehend what I am trying to accomplish right now. Okay. Let us consult. Maybe there's there's obviously a Davina cross stitch equivalent. How to French knot, because my brain doesn't know what it's doing. Boom. Let us learn from the best. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm Right. And then stick it in the fabric. Mm-hmm. Okay. I knew there was something that I was not getting and I was not 
I don't know. So I didn't need to cut this, but whatever, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> My brain figured it out. I was like, there's no way in hell that I'm for Like, I know, I don't know if it's because I dislike them so much that I was like, I'm just gonna yeet this knowledge out of my brain because I hate them so much. No. <laughs> it's because this was confusing me. I'm blaming Sky. I'm blaming Stitch with Sky for the confusion. That might be rude of me. Pull it up. Take it. Wrap it. One, two, three. Ooh. Wait a second. Yeah. One, two, three. Rotate. Stick it in. Hold taut. Pull down. Boom, baby. <laughs> Now we've French knotted. Okay, okay. Again, you guys can't see shit. I'm so sorry. This autofocus. Or it's just so tiny. We really gotta figure out a way to do this. <laughs> so that you can see what's going on, but it's autofocusing. It's not autofocusing. I don't know, guys. Let's just do some more. Now that we kind of remember what we're doing. So, pull this up. Cool. Step one. And we go one, two, three, stick back down near it, hold this taut, pull through, but not too taut. That should get stuck, just taut enough. Yeah, there's a fine taut balance. Boom! Maybe this one's not as nice as the first one. Again, French knots are an enigma. I do not enjoy them but it's fun. It's all good. And this just slipped out of the hoop. I am, I am spiraling. <laughs> I will send you a medical book. I have to read. Really? No. Mm -hmm. My mom was a nurse for like many, many years. So I don't know if I need that. <laughs> Not that I know any information, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, more into to the to mind health as opposed to physical health in terms of like where my knowledge interests are at but i concur and appreciate and i'm so excited for all of the cool badass medical knowledge that you are going to acquire <laughs> did you also get told no, I don't think so. Sometimes we would have like mental health days. My mom would be like, mm, it's fine. You can have a mental health day. Didn't happen often. I also would go to school on snow days because I live right by the school. So. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure it wasn't an all the time thing, but I think my parents were pretty lenient. I like that. You're not bleeding. Go to school. I'm gonna call my grandmother. <laughs> really? Which is wild though, because, well, I guess even like now and stuff. Or even before, because it's like, what happened if you threw up? You know? Okay, that one looks cute. We're just, we're just making little, little French knots. Yeah, absolutely. I think now with my with my nephew's school, if they throw up before they get to school, like they need to stay home for at least 24 hours and not throw up again in order to be allowed to go back to the school. Which fair. But it must be so difficult with school-aged kids and people who work and like can't work from home because it's like kids just be getting sick all the time. Is that three? One, two, no. And then you'd always have those like kids in primary school that would just throw up all over the place and you'd be like, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Oh, I my mom worked nights too, and so we always had to have like real quiet, like we had quiet time. Especially like if she worked nights on the weekends, it was like we had to sit and do quiet activities downstairs. Or like go outside and play and be loud somewhere else so that she could sleep. I think we watched a lot of movies. Okay, I think as much, see they're all different though. They're all different sizes. They're all different consistencies. Like they're not perfect, but I guess these are meant to be flowers. So they don't have to be 100%. They're gonna all be different and have like different variations and all their own unique styles and such. So that's fine. Let's just do one more just for funsies. Okay, pull it up through the side, turn it parallel, do one, two, three, rotate, und stab, hold taut and pull. Boom, there we go. Cool. Okay, we have tackled three of the five stitches I think we need to be doing. Okay, this one is just like short and long stitches. So I think it's similar to the satin stitch, but we're sort of doing different lengths and then we're filling in with another color on top. I think that's what's happening. Okay. Short and long stitch is the next one. Let's write that down. So we're currently practicing the stitches that we need to do in order to complete the pattern. But we're practicing the stitches because I've never embroidered before. I've cross stitched and some of the skills are transferable, but not all of them. So that's why we're practicing. Let's flip this over, tie this in a knot, and keep going. since we last we last spoke oh i video chat with my parents on monday and then my mom was talking about how much she enjoyed being in stream and now that she knows what she's doing because she has a bunch of like hand sewing like of bindings for quilts she has to do so she was like i'm gonna watch the streams while i'm binding in the mornings and i'm like that would be awesome she might be popping by more which would be cool and pop this in there so we are now doing long and shorts and she like Marvin. I think she did. I think she loved Marvin. She loved, well, cause she loves ABBA, right? She's like, she's got disco fever. Her favorite out, like her favorite genres of music are country and disco. <laughs> Just, you know, that's my mom in a nutshell and you know, random obscure seventies rock music. And by obscure, I mean Canadian, like one hit wonders. Oh, super cool my parents are actually gonna go see the chicks the chicks are coming to alberta and my parents are gonna go see them which i think is really cool you know if there's any chick stands in the chat if you get some water yeah no problem didn't want to ruin it for her no <laughs> no she she thoroughly enjoyed it I showed, I showed um, them the sketch beforehand, like what, what it was inspired by and what we were gonna be doing. And so she, they were excited. My, my mom and my dad were excited to see it. And so my mom, I think my mom thoroughly enjoyed it. Now we just gotta get Steve Coogan to comment on your video and be like, respect. And then, you know, then we'd know that we had made it. <laughs> She loved it. Yes, <laughs> exactly, right? You're like, 
Let your, you know, be, be recognized, bear witness. That would be awesome. But yeah, she also appreciated um, mine and Phantasma's duet of Barbie Girl, <laughs> which occurred on a whim. But yeah, we sang lots. It was wild. Uh, oh, I put this here. Which one was the new one? Probably this thin guy there. But yeah. I'm trying to think what else is up. Oh, because they've been updating in terms of like what their plans are. So all the, all the tickets have been bought for the various family members to make their way over here in May. I, think, I don't know if I've told you guys this, but my, my brother's whole thing and the last time, so he's only visited me once since he's been here, because, like, he's younger than me. He's got shit going on. He was in school at the time. So I think it was on his reading week that he came the first time. And his whole thing is that he wanted to go to Warhammer World and go to the, like, tavern that's attached to Warhammer World. It's in Nottingham. So we're going to be going to Nottingham. We're taking a day trip to Nottingham while they're here so he can go back to Warhammer World and get, like, Warhammer beer at the, at the tavern. Um, but my mom is like, well, I'll come to Nottingham, but I don't really want to go to Warhammer World. But we've worked out that, like, Warhammer World's, like, just outside of the town center, so we'll probably have to take the train to the town center and then, like, take a tram to go a bit further. But yeah, what's the name of this? Let me just double check what the name of this. It has a, it has a very specific name. Um, where is the Warhammer World? And it has, like, a very, what's, what's the name of the pub? It has a name. What is it? Bugman's Bar. So he would like to go to Bugman's Bar to have Warhammer beer and go to the Warhammer Museum. And so we will be facilitating that. And then his girlfriend, she just likes nature. And luckily there's a whole bunch of different like nature trails and stuff around here. So she is going to be fine. <laughs> They're going to be living their best life. Shadow will enjoy it too because he'll have so many more like walkie friends to go on adventures with. Okay, doo -doo -doo. starting at the bottom. So this is about how we're like gonna be filling in petals, I think. Oops, this is way the hell over here. Okay. So we're going to practice doing long and short. So this is how much, yeah, like return flights probably. Depends what you're getting. Uh, yeah, I'd say return, you're probably looking at, like, 1,200, 1,500, depending on the airline, depending on the time, flights, all that kind of stuff. Okay, now bring the needle back to the bottom next to the first stitch. Yeah. So it's enough, um, but I think you can get deals. So what my, when my friend came to visit from Ontario, Canada area to London, she managed to go via two different airlines. Obviously it doesn't work if you're going to, depends also to, yeah, possibly, yeah. Cause then the other thing too, is it also depends on whereabouts in Ontario which then would indicate um like which airport because basically if it's any of the like so for instance where I grew up in Sudbury there was an airport but they didn't do direct international flights so you'd always have to take a flight from let's say London to Toronto and then from Toronto to Sudbury where I'm from and the Sudbury to Toronto flight is like $500 in itself um, so sometimes you'd end up taking the bus or doing other things like that. Um, but yeah, so it depends on a few variables. And you're back with water. You are now hydrated. Excellent, excellent. I should get hydrated too. But it's definitely doable. And there's definitely like depending on, again, the flight and the airline and the time of the year. Um, never fly to Canada around Christmas time unless you want delays and bullshit. <laughs> a lot of people try to fly to places around Christmas time and it's like, no, don't do it. My parents straight up said, I never want you and Liam to come home for Christmas because it's so expensive and so ridiculous for what it is. And I'm like, fair. So I do think 
this kind of high-low nonsense is a little bit strange to me. Um, I guess I should go back on the other side. And alternating links. So let's try again like this. But yeah, so start saving. Yeah, exactly, Potato. Yeah, where are your grandparents? Because depending exactly where you have to fly to. Like, and some people, they're really, like, obviously really big on Christmas time and it's really important and stuff. And my parents were like, do not. Where is, I don't know. Okay. Washington. Yeah, so it's one of those where you're kind of flying from one end of the country to the other, aren't you? So it's like, who knows what's going on? Like, from California to Washington, all of the states in between could be having drastically different weathers. <laughs> like, it could be completely different. So it would be an absolute state for sure. Absolutely, you better get saving. Absolutely. And also, it depends. So everyone I talk to, so we only really fly um, Air Canada because every time we've flown WestJet, there's been some shenanigans, but there's other people I've talked to who they always have shenanigans on Air Canada and only fly WestJet. So it really, it really depends. <laughs> it really depends on the situation. Okay, so we're going, oops. We're gonna finish trying this. I'm planning to travel to Scotland in January next year. Oh, that's amazing. Well, are you gonna, f you're gonna fly, yeah? That would be cool. My, uh, Liam and his family, they would go to, like, when they would holiday in Scotland, they would always drive, and they would do, like, a 12-hour drive, and I'm like, I'm from Canada, and that seems, like, 12 hours nonstop is too much. I'm like, you gotta take breaks. You gotta take pee breaks, snack breaks, you know, coffee breaks. You gotta take breaks. You're planning to walk. Just, just, you have to just, you know what you have to do? You have to go on a big walk and have a playlist of just walking songs. You need the proclaimers, I would walk 500 miles, or no, is it a thousand miles? I always forgot how many miles they walk, but I know that Vanessa Carlton walks a thousand miles. Um, and then you just gotta add, those are the only two walking songs I can think of, but I'm sure there are more songs about walking and you gotta just have a whole walk playlist <laughs> and then just walk <laughs> and just do it. Just do it. Okay. So this apparently is like a pedal thing. So we did this high, low variation stuff and then we're going to attempt to do the opposite side high, low variation. Um, and that apparently is us making a flower. So we're gonna try that. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. That would be really cool, Whiskey Tour. <laughs> the sass earlier. I don't know what you're talking about. I will not confirm nor deny any sass that has occurred. <laughs> I plead, I, I am forever innocent. Me, sassy, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the flights aren't bad. Honestly, though, because that's the other thing, too. Like, the flight that I used to take from Sudbury, or from Toronto to Sudbury, it was literally, like, 45 minutes. You would go up, they'd offer you a ginger ale, you'd finish your ginger ale, and you'd already be flying back down again. It's absolute bananas, but they still wanted, like, 500 bucks for it. <laughs> Expansive. Okay. Oh, I have to get my, um... I have to renew my passport because it expires next year and I've never um, renewed it here. So I'll be renewing my Canadian passport in the UK. So I have to bring it to the Canadian embassy, which is Canada House, which is in Leicester Square. But apparently it's not going to be that difficult. It's more just that I need to make sure that I'm not, I don't, need to go anywhere requiring my passport while it's like away from me for a bunch of times because I think there's a lot of like 
backups and delays and bullshit. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. We have friends that are having a wedding in Greece this year. Um, so I want to go to that. So probably after that, then I'll have to get my passport renewed. But we'll see how that goes. Apparently it's quite straightforward. People do it all the time, but I've just not ever had to do that. Because it was like one of those 10 year ones. So I did it when I was young in Canada and I'm just like, whatever, I got a passport now. But, mm hmm Honestly, it does. It sounds like such an interesting place. And it's actually really funny. So there is actually a bar in London called the Maple Leaf. I don't think they have pancakes though. I feel like they should though. Also guys, I don't know if you know, it's Shrove Tuesday, but the UK has completely co-opted and basically completely, um, you know, you know how people, are get, people get like really shitty about the fact that like we've commercialized Christmas and we've taken the Christ out of Christmas. Um, we've taken the Shrove out of Shrove Tuesday and it's just straight up pancake day. <laughs> it's just full on. They're like, it's pancake day. You know, Tesco has big like pancake day celebration stuff. And they're all about pancakes. Oh, Jude. Sh isn't it called Shrove Tuesday? It's Shrove Tuesday followed by Ash Wednesday. I think it's like a Catholic thing. I don't know. But it's because I remember having it in Canada as well. But they've basically just been like, no, nah, guys, it's pancake day. It's literally just pancake day. So it's a full on event that happens in the UK. They were like, oh, I'm sorry. This ha used to be. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Let's look it up. Let's find out. Why, why, why pancakes on Shrove Tuesday? Shrove, Shrove Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday is today. No, it's not. February, oh no, it's 2021. What are you talking about? Shrove Tuesday 2023 is today. Yeah, what is the meaning? Yeah, Ash Wednesday, not Pancake Day. Honestly, yeah, basically, that's what's happened. Yeah, so it's a movable festival determined by Easter. The expression Shrove Tuesday comes from the word shrive, meaning absolve. So, yeah, it's a traditional feast day before the start of Lent on Ash Wednesday. So Ash Wednesday, but why? So what happens on Shrove Tuesday? What does is, what is the... Okay, when is pancake, why do we celebrate Shrove Tuesday? I can't words. Why do we celebrate Shrove Tuesday? That's a Christian thing. Takes place every year, but falls on different days depending on Easter. One is pancake day. Yeah, I love how they call it. So it's, yeah, it basically signifies, it's the day before the day that signifies Lent. So shrove is the past term for the word shrive, which means to present oneself to a priest for confession, penance, or absolution. The day before Lent fast begins, Shrove Tuesday is for people to gain penance from God before they begin fasting. It is also a chance for people to enjoy rich and fatty foods as the last celebration before fasting begins. Pancakes are traditionally eaten because they were used a way to use up rich foods people have, such as eggs and milk, before they went bad during a long fast interesting okay because i was like why the hell pancakes why pancakes turns out because you're gonna start fasting for lent you need to use up your milk and your eggs and stuff before that because you don't want them to go bad because you don't want to waste food but you also want to you know get into heaven and you know do your thing so you make pancakes interesting interesting okay one time my mom didn't know it was Ash Wednesday and a woman with ash on her forehead. My mom was trying to be helpful and she was like, excuse me, you have something on your forehead. And the lady just stared at her. Absolutely didn't like. <laughs> it's true. To be fair, that happened to me. I didn't say anything to people, but I just saw people walking around with smudges on their forehead. And at first I was like, I don't know what's going on. And then I was like, right. Now I know. Hi, Mia. Hello, hello. How you doing? We're just talking about the origin of Pancake Day aka Shrove Tuesday and how the Brits have completely um what's it called when you is it not it's not called anglicized they've commercialized Shrove Tuesday and distilled it into pancake day and we're just trying to figure out why pancakes 
Also, actually, I have a very, 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 very topical, important, important, of the utmost important poll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're the resident Brit in the chat right now, so it happens. <laughs> okay. This is a very important question. What do you have on your pancakes? Because the Brits, again, sorry, Saul, I'm throwing you guys under the bus. They do sugar and lemon. And I'm like, ex oh, you know, Pete's also resident Brit in the chat. We have two Brits in the chat that we can, that we can, ex we can ask to answer for these crimes. <laughs> Sugar and lemon, which I had never heard of because I am from the land where obviously the only thing you put on your goddamn pancakes is maple syrup. I don't know. What other things do you put on your pancakes? Just like butter, but you put butter with maple syrup. I don't know. We these are this is the this is the important question. This is the important question that I need to know. Yeah, right? See, everybody, everyone is like the Brits, so no. Yeah, exactly. Fruit, exactly. Ooh, peanut butter and syrup, exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm gonna be getting home tomorrow. That's amazing, cat. That's amazing, cat. Yeah. Peanut butter and Syrup, either Aunt Jemima cornstarch bullshit, but we forgive her, or pure maple. The pure maple, or with fruit, absolutely, maple syrup, yeah, sugar and lemon, excuse me, right? Everybody is wild. Yeah, to get that sugar and lemon, the sweet and sour pancakes. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, are you also perturbed? Because that's what I was told. Liam was like, yeah, we have lemon. Like sugar and lemon on our pancakes. And I was like, um, excuse me. Uh, excuse me, say what now? <laughs> That's not how you eat a pancake, sir. What? So, you know, I'm glad everybody is also as shook as I was. We don't have maple syrup here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No idea. <laughs> or you do, but it's like real bougie expensive stuff. Sweet and sour pancakes. Oh my God. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so but did you guys know as well that there is ow. no that's the right way to do pancakes I don't understand my issue with like <laughs> right exactly Saul's so like I also have beef um I abstain Pete Pete are you still here please tell me how you like your pancakes inquiring minds want to know I promise I will not shit on you if you enjoy um sugar and lemon on your pancakes I will not judge just silence <laughs> you want to fight? No, maybe a little. Did you guys know that there's actually like a national, Canada has like their own um, maple syrup reserve. I think it's in Quebec. There's actually like a maple syrup reserve that's under lock and key in case there's a maple syrup shortage because that's like one of our greatest exports. And actually a few years ago, I don't know how long it was, probably like a decade ago, there was um, a big old conundrum <laughs> you're not really a pancake person that's fair that's also fair that's fair um but yeah there was actually a heist someone oceans 11 the pancake reserve and they stole the pancakes in um in the pancake or not pancakes stole the maple syrup in the maple syrup reserve oh okay speaking of even more batshit crazy stuff um, sorry, I digress. I'm talking about, um, also I put a lot of syrup in my pancakes and get teased for it. Mm, no, there's never such thing as too much syrup. Excuse me. Excuse me. Absolutely not. <laughs> Damn it, Saul. Wow. We'll take on the winner of the fight. <laughs> and when Dash wins, I'll just give her a hug and a cup of tea. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I appreciate that. That's so funny. <laughs> what? In a landslide victory. Who knows how that could have happened? 
Oh, I should have disabled the channel points. That's so funny. So I was like, guys, in a landslide, sugar and lemon is the obvious winner. <sighs> Some people just like to watch the world burn, don't they? <laughs> That's incredible. That's so funny. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, but speaking of, so I, you know, yes, maple syrup, and yes, you know, there is a maple syrup reserve that somebody tried to, you know, Ocean's Eleven a few years ago. But I found out something even more wild. Did you guys know how clowns copyright their clown makeup? It's this bonkers thing that I found on Twitter and I was like, I need to verify to make sure this shit's not fake news. And it's not. <laughs> so there is, it's actually a church in England. Yeah, so they copyright it, but it's unofficial. It's outside of the traditional legal system. They paint their clown makeup on an egg and they bring this egg to this thing that's affectionately known as the clown church and it's displayed there is a clown that is the keeper of the clown eggs and that's how they unofficially trademark their clown makeup it's absolutely ridiculous. You have to lurk, no problem. Yes, go make your coffee before your meeting. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope your meeting goes well. I do hope your meeting goes well. Sits back and watches the world burn. Yeah. Ooh, peanut butter whiskey. That sounds incredible. That also would be really good at maple syrup. Touch the clown around. No, honestly, I am telling you, I, I was today years old, but I did find this out and it's absolutely ridiculous. Also, sharp angles with clown makeup are very inappropriate. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that part. I did not know that part, but yes. That, that makes a lot of sense though. But yes, clown egg makeup museum. And this museum is in London. I think I need to take a trip to the clown museum, you guys. But yeah, look at look at these eggs, these clown eggs. So apparently there's this clowns gallery museum based at Trinity Church in London's East End, known as Clowns Church. Um and yeah, each of the eggs represents a unique face design, and it's like an informal copyright. And there's a clown's church packed with memorabilia. And there's like a clown curator of the clown museum. Like, look at this shit. Clowns from everywhere have trademarked their clowns. Oh, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. There is some, actually, this one here has some sharp angles in it. I don't know if you can see it, but this guy down here. Oh, no, it's not autofocusing, and I keep low-key stabbing myself. Autofocus. See that guy down there? He's got some sharp angles. He's got some sharp angles on his face. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Oh, and they hire artists. They hire international clown egg artists. Each egg takes several days and they are paid for eggs. Not every applicant for a clown egg is successful. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so I found that out. So yeah, <laughs> that is a thing. Okay, so we're just learning how to do this. I think we probably want to have less black when we're doing the petals IRL, but we're just practicing. Okay, I might need to blow my nose again. I can't breathe, you guys. Oops. Looks like we kind of do something like that. Okay. 
Okay, that's interesting. So it's sort of like to make... Oh, you know what I was doing while I've been ill? As, you know, I'm still ill. Actually, let me blow my nose first and then I will tell you. sort of kind of but I've been I've been binging the YouTube channel Mike's Mike so me and Kat have talked about this because I watched the Pretty Little Liars one and then I watched the Glee one and now I'm currently watching the Gossip Girl one again shows that I never actually watched when they were originally airing but I'm obsessed I'm kind of low-key obsessed with him and that's like my new favorite like again I've told you guys anyone who can do dramatic intense deep dives of like early to 2010s 2000s stuff i appreciate because that's how my brain is my brain also enjoys a good 2000s deep dive okay let's do the other side of this and then i think we have what two more stitches to learn how to do and then it's on to like actually doing the things oh my goodness captain cedric in the house how you doing, my dude? Long time no see on here. I see you all the time on Insta. I see you all the time on Insta, getting swole, making yummy food, and living your best life. How are things? How are things? Good, sir. Are you staying out of trouble? Looking swole and, you know, eating good food. Things are good. I am congested and currently cannot really breathe out of my nose. <laughs> so I hope you are well. I hope you are well. I was just talking about how I'm currently watching this YouTuber who does deep dives of early 2000s to 2010s TV. And I'm obsessed. I just rabbit hole to my heart's content. Loving every minute of it. Okay, this looks messy as hell, but again, we're practicing and we don't have like a, a um, whatchamacallit, to work off of, but we'll figure it out. Okay. I'm surprised Shadow's not come up to say hi. He must have had a long old day being pampered. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to say. So again, I told you he has his like little pampered pooch moment. And with the like doggy spa package, they get a free bandana that goes along their collar. But we always bring him in a harness so they like can't really put it on. So they gave it to me. And it's like a special Valentine's themed one. And the bandana's all covered in hearts. And in the hearts it says I woof you. Like woof. So they're all just hearts that say I woof you. And I'm like, this is too cute. I can't even. <laughs> I can't handle it. I've not put him in it yet. Um, cause when he's at home, he doesn't like wear a collar and stuff around the house, except for, you know, special occasions when I want to put a bow tie or something on him. So I'll have to see it later. But yeah, I was like, this is adorable. Okay. We can probably practice the long and short. Turn our Cooper for everything. Yeah. <laughs> you miss me on your acne fool asking me if I want the Krabby Patty formula and such. <laughs> Which I do, but you still won't tell me. <laughs> but yeah, no, things are things are good. Again, aside from, you know, the being ill of it all. But I'm hoping we're turning a corner. Like I said, it usually takes me about a week to recover from any sort of ill illness I have. Um, I don't know why I decided to put this this way and then draw them. I don't know. But now I'm committed. 
Gotta bounce. Oh, no problem, Saul. I hope you have a good stream. I hope everything goes well. Yeah, thank you. I'm hoping, yeah, maybe talking and getting getting all the gunk moving. You know, I missed you guys. So I wanted to come and hang out. So thank you for bearing with me in terms of my snotty, congested mess. But I hope your stream goes well. Have an amazing afternoon. But yeah, still don't know why this is the way we decided to do this. But we're committed. And so, here we go. Back stitch, satin stitch, French knot, short and long stitch, sort of, kinda. It's not a word, it's a secret. It is. <laughs> okay. Ooh, now we gotta do a fishbone stitch. Right. Okay. So this is to make leaves. Okay. Let's make some leaves. And again, I think all of this is two stitches. Yeah, of course. You still gotta show you're still alive. Absolutely. Like I said, I've seen you all over the gram looking like you're still alive. But I always appreciate you stopping by here too. Fishbone stitch. We've been, um... I'm working on craft kits. So we've had five craft kits we've been working on for a while. Um, this is the last one of five for now. We'll see. We might acquire more eventually as well. I'm thinking Easy Mac for lunch. Ooh, that sounds really nice. I will see you in a few when you are all lunched up. All lunched up and ready to go. Okay. Let's do a fish bone. It's probably gonna be easier to do these things when we actually have um, leaves. Oh, maybe we don't actually have leaves and we have to make them. I thought they were gonna be all listed out on here, but I guess not. It's fine. Okay. Ow. Oh no, maybe they are. I think I assumed that there would be more Oh no, the leaves are on there. It's okay then. I guess it depends how much detail you want to put on the actual, like, transfer, fabric transfer pattern. Adhesive, I don't know. I don't know, guys. When you're sketching out the pattern on the canvas, I'm sure you could put a lot of detail to know what you're doing or a little bit of detail. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's what my brain was trying to do. Okay. Let's do a fishbone stitch. Again, I don't know why we committed to this particular angle, but we have, so we're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. So. Seems like we are following a leaf pattern. So we go from one to two. So this is what we're doing, apparently. So we're going from one to two, then we're doing this, then we're doing this, then we're doing that, and then hopefully it makes a leaf by the end of it. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. So one, two, and then I think it's kind of similar to the high-low stitch, but instead of just arbitrarily high-lowing, we're like strategically high-lowing. If that makes sense. Okay. And then Bring the needle up. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. And so then we're doing stitch number seven or six, and then seven is actually coming down below this, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, that that works. And then are we just repeating? 
repeat the leaf pattern. Repeat and leaf harvest take 0.7. Okay. I guess you can make stitches like thicker. <laughs> I'm glad to see. You. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Cedric, thank you so much. No, I appreciate that. Again, like I said, I'm congested, so I'm you know only a certain level of of hype today. But yeah, we are we are doing we are doing our best to make the things, and I appreciate you doing being here too. To be a part of it. That looks like a leaf, eh? Again, you guys can't really see what's going on. Everything is so small. Once we start actually making a thing, maybe it'll be better. <laughs> I don't know. We really gotta figure this out. Oop, that one was a bit too far, but that's okay. This is, we're learning. That looks like a leaf, you know? I think we've successfully leafed. I guess if we wanted to, it to be bigger, we could, you know. But that seems like a leaf to me. You guys are like, it just looks like lines. And you would be correct. Hmm. Should we try again and we'll try to do like a chonkier leaf maybe as well and then after this we have one more stitch to learn and then we can start doing the outlining because again i think the back stitching will be quite simple because again i've back stitched before satin stitch seems like it should be all right as well um okay let's try to make a chonkier um leaf I feel like we're keeping all of this close together, which I think we need to do, but what I don't understand is how we make it come up and be chunkier. You know what I mean? And back with food, welcome back. Honestly, mac and cheese sounds excellent right now. But yeah, so we've made a leaf and now we're trying to make a bit of a chunkier leaf just because I feel like we should try to learn to do that. Um, and I guess it doesn't really matter when we move down in the... Um, that's kind of... It's kind of looking chunkier. Not by much, but okay. Maybe we need to make bigger stitches. Or I guess maybe too what would happen is if the line we start with, but I don't know because it wants you to do a small line and then slowly move its way down. I love it and it's enough for me to get through lunch and have a cheese. Yay! <laughs> You're just gonna buy the lower again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I saw that you were you were playing Sonic with Kelsey, weren't you? How did that go? I bet it was incredible. Yeah, I saw you guys get up to nonsense yesterday. Cause are you gonna start, cause I know you were doing video game things on your YouTube channel, are you still gonna be doing that? Here we go, this is actually, it is happening. I think I need to not be afraid to like move the stitches out more. Again, why is this, like I genuinely feel like this even looks smaller than, like what, what is, what's our camera situation like? Because this seems like ridiculous. Uh, let me check. Can 
figure. Camera. Why is it zoomed? Exposure. What if we default it? Is this the default? Interesting, interesting. Auto exposure. That's a bit better, it's like focusing finally, but I don't know if that's gonna help us. And then that's the zoom. I don't necessarily want it to zoom, but now you guys can sort of see what's going on there. Maybe, maybe we do zoom, I don't know. No, let's not zoom, but we will focus. Maybe, is that better? We're not sure. It was a blast, you guys had to walk us through a lot. <laughs> That's amazing. Did she not have a lot of knowledge of Sonic? Ba, ba, da, ba, it's oh, thank you, time. Pete. It's a good idea. Let's let's stretch before we move on to the final stitch. And then I guess yeah, we queue up this this frame and we just start going for it. <sighs> mm. I should finish my lemon water. Maybe I should have a strepsil as well. <sighs> she has a lot, but not what. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know a lot more. I would assume no one knows as much about the Sonic lore as you do. <laughs> Don't want you to get a sit on. Ha 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 ha. But um. Yeah, we wouldn't want that. We would not want that at all. Mm -hmm. And honestly, considering that I've been like hounding over this thing. Okay. To be fair, I don't know a lot about Sonic lore either, but I did really enjoy the Sonic games. And by games, I mean like probably game up. I know it was a million Sonic games, but my brother had one for the PC. So, been knowing since 1997. It's true, man. I would not mess with your knowledge, but also too, like, I was saying this to our friend Salt earlier. Um, like, there's certain things that I don't have a lot of knowledge about. Um, and then I just, like, people who I think are more knowledgeable than me in these areas, I just accept as fact, you know? So it's like, you could tell me like a video game fact and I'd be like, yeah, makes sense. Pete could tell me like a health fact and I'd be like, yeah, definitely makes sense. You guys could be full of shit and could be lying to me and I'd be like, no, nah, I think it checks out. Maybe I trust you guys too much or you know, maybe my brain is just so full of snot that I don't care. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it's true. It happens almost every time. Someone says something and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense to me. That feels legit. Okay, final stitch. Um, I don't know why I'm committed to this angle here, but I'm gonna change it slightly. You can, tribute, yeah, cat, yes, absolutely. Or you, I would trust you with DIY facts. Cat would be like, this is how you do a thing. I'd be like, yeah, makes sense. That checks out. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, probably. But also, yes, absolutely, I would trust you with Lord of the Rings facts. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, that's a little bit better. That's not us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I was when I was moonlighting as a miniature electrician, I feel like I relied heavily on you, if not for you know confidence. I was like, ah, I don't know what's going on. Okay. So now we're doing the lazy daisy. Lazy daisy. And apparently we should draw a star shape. And each line will represent a petal. Okay. Let us draw a star shape. This is what they meant by star. I know it's not really a star, but like, <laughs> it's all confidence and rubber gloves and rubber gloves. I love that. Mm-hmm. 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 Definitely. Okay. So apparently, Lazy Daisy 
we're gonna learn today. And I think it wants us again. I think all of these are gonna be double threads except for the back stitch. Let me just clarify again, just because. Yeah, we're going to transfer both oranges. That includes the petal. Put the petal to the metal. Shut up and drive. <laughs> Rihanna is the goat. Okay. Okay, we need you. We don't need you yet. Although I've been playing a lot of Sonic Light ever since. Oh yeah. You played a lot of Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need you need to punch something. Metaphysical. Now you got that song stuck in my head. Honestly, bad girl gone what is it? Good girl gone bad, Rihanna. That that era was a good era. That was I feel like that's the era that I know the most. That's like, don't stop the music, um, shut up and drive, umbrella, all of those, Disturbia, basically like when Rihanna had short hair, <laughs> that was like the time, that was, that was when all of those bops came out, Breaking Dishes, I don't know if you guys ever watched So You Think You Can Dance, but there was like, I think there was actually a So You Think You Can Dance Canada, and there was this iconic dance routine to Breaking Dishes by Rihanna. And then they did like a Dancing with the Stars to or So You Think You Can Dance tour. And uh, they came to my hometown and we got to see the Breaking Dishes dance IRL and it was very cool. They also did a dance to um, the unofficial theme song of Australia, which is Untouched by the Veronicas. Which I liked the Veronicas before they were on So You Think You Can Dance, but all the like dance girlies in my high school were like, oh my god, untouched. And I was like, I already knew about that song. <laughs> okay. We've drawn a star. It kind of looks like a scared, limpy spider. Um, bring the embroidery needle up through the center where you want the flower to be. Reinsert your needle beside this point, like the picture. Okay. Hmm? Bring your nerve. Reinsert the needle. Okay, okay. So in the center, up. If you remember, it was fame. Was it really? I'll have to Google that one. Because you know. Alice in Wonderland is my jam. That'd be so good. No, that would be so good. I love that. Okay, and then we need to insert it beside this point. So beside the point, okay. Now bring your needle up through the fabric where you want the edge of the petal to be, okay edge of the petal put in discord yes please confidence rubber those are really food <laughs> food to do all the diy well yeah you gotta have snacks you need to have snacks while you're diying you absolutely have to okay so now bring the needle up to the fabric with pebble beat use the needle lasso the loop of the thread at the center and complete a small stitch to secure the petal in place so like this Ho oh, ho! We just made a pedal. Not just snacks, I'll be a cook. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I will make the food, you guys do the DIY. Okay, let's try this again. So now we know what we're doing. So we want this to come in. Wait, yes. So. Or do we do, mm, okay. So we bring up through the center. Yeah, off. Yeah. Yeah, that was really sad. It's, well, not, not was, it still is very sad. 
Okay, so we need to bring this back down again. Bring this. No. Mm, shit. Come back up. Come back up. We need this loop. This needs to be a loop. Okay, and then we bring this back up to the edge. I'm on the edge of glory and I'm making all these petals with you. And then we put a little stitch there to secure the bag. Yeah, well, I need to, I just read a thing that um, Hayden Panettiere's brother, Jensen Panettiere, 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 he passed away. Um, and I know, well, I don't know, but like reading about all the stuff that Hayden's been going through and how super, super close she is with her brother, I'm like, shit, this is gonna wreck her. Hopefully, well, he's so young, like you don't know obviously what's happened, but, and to be fair too, like I, I've seen a few, some of them I didn't know, but like, so there's been a few like soap stars, like Days of Our Lives soap stars, again, passing away really young, like in their 20s, in their early 30s. And I'm just like, geez, what's going on with all these baby boys in Hollywood? I hope they're okay. Oh shit, I forgot. I need to not pull this all the way through. But yeah, so I'm, I'm really, I'm concerned about the potential fallout for all of that. And I hope that, you know, her family is okay. Yeah, I don't think she is either. And I thought she was engaged to that person. And then her ex is the mayor of Ukraine, the mayor of Kiev's um, brother, and they're all currently fighting in the Ukraine war right now. Um, I think her daughter too, who she gave up custody for, might also be in Ukraine, or maybe she's not in Ukraine anymore. Um, but yeah. Yeah, twin brother, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm mostly ramen. Ooh, I like ramen. Actually, you know what? I don't think I've ever had ramen because I've never found a gluten-free ramen. So if you can make gluten-free ramen happen for me, Cedric, that would be incredible. Yeah, it just seems like, yeah, a lot, a lot is going on for her. Was that too intense of a knot? We're trying to make a petal. Here we go. I don't know if this is too thin. I'm pushing them all in together, but it looks like maybe there's gonna be a center. So maybe I don't need to do that. Okay, okay. So go in through the center, but then go down. Hmm. Okay. So I've still not quite figured this out because this is now a lot thinner than the other one, but I think maybe, I think they probably are, but yeah, they don't have a lot of flavor. That's the thing, like I think it's like, you can get the gluten-free noodles. I don't know what else is in, I don't know if it's in the broth or something that they just don't seem to make ramen ones. Wrong. Yeah, which I make pho. To be fair, I, I fucking love pho. <laughs> I love pho. Pho is one of my faves. Okay, let's try to actually make this petal go further out. Okay, there we go. That might be a bit better. And then we might get a bit of a fuller petal maybe? I think maybe, ooh, you know what it is? I think I'm putting them not right beside each other. I'm putting them over top of each other. Hmm, okay. Let's try with these last few petals. I think I'm sort of figuring out what's going on. So some of the petals, I'm like, okay, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I think I'm meant to be putting them like either side of each other. So this one and then this one right beside it this way. I was right beside it the other way, but then it's like not making a petal. Okay, okay. Let's see if this makes more sense. I think so. That's a bit more of a petal. I was gonna say texture, but designed. Mm, fa la 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 la
la la la. That's me singing about how much I love pho. <laughs> to be fair, I could kill for some pho right now, especially considering that my nose is still plugged. Liam made um his like he makes this like famous Korean stew that has a lot of ginger and garlic in it. So he made that like when I was newly congested. I'm gonna have to request that again soon. If I can't shake this though, we gotta have pancakes today. Ah, oh, Cedric, I don't know if you were here for the pancake debacle. Are, what, what do you have on your pancakes? What is your pancake topping of choice? Because these Brits over here, I was informed that apparently sugar and lemon, hot toddy, yeah, to be fair, that would be a nice idea. I have been doing, what's the, what's the alcohol in a hot toddy? I've been doing a lot of like honey lemon stuff, so I probably could just add a, you know, a splash of something warm to just go through my body. Okay, cool. This is actually super cute. This like lazy daisy stitch thing. I think that's really cute. I like that. Okay, let's finish this. Ugh, cold honey lemon nonsense. These Canadians over here. Hey man, I feel like I need to consume a certain amount of maple syrup annually or else I lose my citizenship you know I feel like it's like a thing <laughs> I actually put like a tablespoon of maple syrup in my oatmeal every morning so you know these these veins are running thick with the maple syrup we used to go did I I'm sure I've told you guys this before about going to like a maple sugar bush when I was in primary school, one of our field trips would go to Maple Sugar Bush, and we went, I think we probably went in, like, February, March, so it was still full of snow. Mind you, there's snow in Northern Ontario, like, until April, and then it, like, freakishly will always snow in May, like I was a one-off. Whiskey, that's what it is. I don't know if I have any whiskey in the house. Maybe. We might. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so when I was in primary school, we went to a maple sugar bush and we got to see all the maple trees and how they would tap the maple tree to get the maple out. And then, um, we would, go, we went to the, the place where they have these giant vats where they boil it down so it gets to its like maple syrupiness. And then the piece de resistance is we went into this like outdoor, it was like, you know when you like outdoor can't like um picnic tables but it had like a balcony like a awning or whatever and they brought out these troughs of fresh snow and they gave us all popsicle sticks and they would take the boiling hot maple syrup and you pour it in a line across the snow and then you take your popsicle stick and you roll up the maple because hitting the snow turns it into like a taffy consistency and then you have a maple popsicle and that was pinnacle maple syrup maple sugar bush experience and so there's never been enough snow here and also maybe i don't know if i would trust the snow in my backyard because i'm sure my dog and the foxes and the cats in the neighborhood have like peed and pooped all over it but you know fresh snow covered in maple syrup roll up maple pop excellent Ooh, grape jelly between each blueberry pancake and syrup, regular or strawberry, then whipped cream on top with a few more blueberries. Damn, that's incredible. That is incredible. I haven't had a blueberry pancake in a long time. You know the pancake of choice that Liam and I keep making? And we probably will do this again. Because we have some. Um, does anybody watch Adventure Time? Or has watched Adventure Time? We like making bacon pancakes. And every time we make bacon pancakes, we have to sing the bacon pancake song. Do you guys know what the bacon pancake song is? And then also on YouTube, it's one of my favorite things and it makes me giggle. There's actually a video of the bacon pancake song, but dubbed into different languages. So you hear how the song would be sung in like German versus like, um, like Swedish versus Finnish versus like Dutch versus like Arabic, you know? 
Come on, Greg. No, not that one. The bacon pancake songs. But yes, <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Of course, Cedric knows what I'm talking about. To be fair, I haven't watched Adventure Time in a hot, hot minute. That show can kind of taper over into like fever dream land. Um, yeah, but definitely. You've never watched it, but I know the song. Thanks for next. Yeah. Bacon pancakes, bacon, bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I put it in a pancake. Bacon pancakes, that's what it's gonna make. Bacon pancakes. And then there's like all the different languages. Highly recommend looking that up. Look up the bacon pancake song, but different languages. And then there's a whole compilation and it just makes me laugh and I love it. <laughs> okay. Are we ready to get down to business, you guys? To defeat the Huns. Yeah, I don't remember what episode that was in either, but I like the song. Okay. So. Me thinks. that it's time well first let's prove let's let's prove preview we also gotta we also gotta so we'll quickly knot this off we will see these are the stitches that we need for the festivities this is too short for me to tie let me do it this way like i did with the last one it's not going to be a perfect one but it's just fine okay okay Okay. All right, so. I said nothing right. Oh no. Yeah, no, you not having something to do is not good right now. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. We gotta get you a task. We need to get you a task. Okay, so. For this project that we will be doing, we need the following five stitches. We need a backstitch. We know how to backstitch. Backstitch, I think we can crush the backstitch. I guess we can stick the autofocus back on just because we're gonna be moving around and stuff a little bit more. Let's configure the video. Let's go back into autofocus mode, apply. We'll have blurry moments, but it's fine. Oh, you did, that's true. Yeah, how did, how did the one that was taking over for you for the week do? So we need a backstitch. We know how to backstitch. Satin stitch which is basically a bunch of backstitching, but like beside each other to fill in. French knots, we hate them, but they look cute. Short and long stitch. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this yet, but we will get better at it, I think. It's basically just for one section, so I think we can figure it out. Um, fishbone stitch is for the leaves, and then the lazy daisy stitch. But the majority of it is um, backstitching and satin stitching, I believe. So that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I assume she did okay. I didn't hear anything. That's good. That's good. You didn't hear anything bad. It's one of those no news is good news. That's what we talk about. Um, my brother is a very aloof individual and by aloof, I mean, he also has very bad ADHD and there's time differences and you know, if he doesn't have answers, basically what happens is my mom will ask him a question and instead of being like, I don't know, let me get back to you. He will be like, oh, I need to find out the answer. And then he forgets that he didn't tell her what the answer is, you know, just classic neuro, neuro spicy stuff. But yeah, so we always joke that no news is good news with him because he just you know is living his life and then we'll find out later on how he's doing <laughs> okay so this actually is meant to fit in here but it's actually like really tight this is a really tight hoop situation interesting is it meant to be like that i guess so this just feels really tight for the hoop that we're gonna be putting on but that's fine It's only because I feel like we're back stitching all the way down and then it's like, okay. I guess though we can move it around because right here, like you can kind of very faintly see the lines of the design. It kind of ends up going off the end, but we want to make sure that we're actually 
not stitching all the way. So I'm gonna just move it up slightly. And then obviously when we put the hoop on, if the hoop gets finished and it's like slightly over the stitches, I think it's okay. Try not to take some Excedrin, but I think I need some. What's Excedrin? Is that like another over the counter calming, like focus thing? I don't know. The other thing too here in the UK is that everything is generic names. So none of the like name brand drugs. So I'm so used to calling things like Advil, Tylenol, stuff like that. It's not what it's called. It's like their actual drug names. So I get confused sometimes. Okay, so first things first, um, we're just gonna do hella backstitch. So we need to backstitch this entire girly here, backstitch the spider and the webs, backstitch all of the flower stalks, um, I think the leaves we don't have to backstitch. We just have to do the stalks and then we will be doing the fishbone stitch for those petals or for the leaves. So I think we just jump into it and hope for the best, right? That seems like a good idea. Sort of, kind of, maybe. Okay, let's pop this bad boy back up here. Slide you in here. And we're gonna... We're gonna embroider, guys. We've not ever done this. I've backstitched before though, but I've never backstitched an embroidery project. So it is still new. It is still new. Um, again, I don't know how like big to make the stitches. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know the thickness of our stitches, but I guess it doesn't particularly matter as long as it I don't know, they seem pretty even according to this like little little drawing here. I don't know. This is the part where we fuck around and find out, I guess. And we're just using one strand for this. Which is fine. What time is it? Okay. Yeah, we have like a half hour. I think we can at least get are girly fully backstitched. That's what I'm hoping for. If we can get Lil Miss, Lil Miss, I don't have a head fully backstitched, I'd say we're in business. Okay. Oh yeah, we need to make some knots. We need to make some knots. I'm not used to that. Not used to knots. Maybe the first thing we'll do, it seems silly, but I don't want the knot of the fabric to be down here because I assume that the hoop is gonna be in the way. So maybe we start with the blouse. She's just gonna be a floating shirt. Okay. She looks like a Delia's catalog, true, true. It's giving very 90s crop top energy. I've recently started following um, these accounts on Twitter that are just like people that show screenshots from like old 90s magazines or like 2000s magazines. And I'm like, yep, yep. I think there was ones that like, I actually definitely had them because I kept all my J14s, all my M magazines, like my 17, my teen, what was it? Teen Cosmo, what was the teen one? Anyway. Yeah, I kept all that shit for so long. So I'm excited to, when I come across them and I'll be like, I actually had that one. <laughs> okay. Wow, first stitch, you guys. I guess it is sort of similar to cross stitch when you are back stitching because you can do the individual crosses, but some of them are like really big. Um, so like, or they're not following the actual squares. So you kind of just like cut across the back stitch. So I guess it's similar to this one as a fluffier individual and look at this catalog of accessories. Yeah, they really want all the clothes. I don't know what, like if I had any specific like, 
when I would look at those catalogs and stuff, I, you know what I would always do? I would always look at the hair tutorials and I would cut them out and be like, I'm gonna make sure I try to style my hair that way. I never did. I never did. I was like, look at me trying to trying to do my hair. No, this is what this is what it does. I don't do cute hair things. What are you talking about? The big ones too, like the the ones that I remember like flagging a bunch of were like the prom ones where they would go through and be like, these are like the girly prom dresses and these are like the rocker prom dresses. And I'm like 12 being like, when I graduate, this is the kind of dress I want. I don't think we actually had Delia's in Canada because I've seen a few like um, again on these on these Twitter feeds of these old school magazines that I don't think we ever had Delia's um, but we had like I'm trying to think what our equivalent might have been we'd have like a, oh what's it called there was one called like stitchers I think it, that's what it was called or stitches it was literally called stitches that was the name of one of the stores and like garage was one of them um yeah honestly no definitely i think especially too like 90s 2000s absolutely yeah there was not they were not giving inclusive body type energy back in the 90s 2000s for sure i can't no they definitely were not I hope that like the magazines now I've not looked at a teen magazine in a while um I'm surprised I don't even know if they still make them because I feel like all of them are back in um like because because all of the like you know celebrities and stuff are on social media it sort of like takes away the need for a magazine like a teen magazine because the whole thing was that like celebrities weren't accessible to us like they are now so what we would do then is buy magazines to then see what they're up to and it's like well no I can just go on Twitter or I can go on Instagram and I can literally see what they're doing I don't need to like pay money to a magazine in order to get the same experience um which is interesting but yeah no it's true and eh? they're like oh let's bring back you know the 90s runway looks and we're like no 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 <laughs> And also, I don't even know if when those existed, we even liked those then. We were just like, oh, that's a trend, okay. I think it's because the world has this like weird, and to be fair, you know, I feel like I went through a phase where I was like, you know, like, what your envision of like a cool girl is, right? And for me, it wasn't necessarily like the certain like size of a cool girl, but it was like what they were doing. And obviously like a lot of these things, it's like, oh yeah, we go out to like clubs and rock concerts and we hang out with rock stars and like smoke cigarettes and drink booze and lounge around and like look hot. And it's like, yeah, cigarettes are a, are a meal suppressant. And if you're like partying and doing all that kind of stuff, naturally you would have, you know, it appeals to those certain physiques and things as a sort of byproduct of that negative lifestyle. And then like that sort of like rock star lifestyle used to impress me so much. And when I would hear about people going out to concerts and like I dated people who were in bands and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh my God, like the rock star life is so cool and wonderful and whatever. And I'm like, now that I'm older, I'm like, it's like Shania Twain. I'm like, that don't impress me much. I'm like, no. It's not glamorous, it's a hard life, you know? 80s, 90s, at the Guns N' Roses. Yeah, exactly, it was like, ooh, that's so cool and mysterious. And I'm like, no, actually. And like, you know, it's one thing for, you know, the Guns N' Roses and like the celebrities and the Stones to be doing that, but it's like when you're, you know, your like cool childhood crush who's like 19, who's living that lifestyle. And I'm like, mm, no, yeah, exactly. That's how I feel too. It was like, oh, like I used to always be like, oh, like people are going out without me. And I used to have like a bit of FOMO about it. But then yeah, you reflect and you're like, no, I remember when I tried to like go out to bars and stuff and it was just not for me. And now I know that. 
I'm like, okay. Like, I would definitely, <laughs> I was thinking about this. Like, if I ever decided to, like, pursue, like, singing and music, like, as a career or even as, like, a side hustle or something like that, it would be like, okay, cool, you know, the, the band is gonna go on stage at midnight, we're gonna play, you know, like, a 15-minute set, and then we'll finish, and I'll be like, okay, guys, peace out, it's past my bedtime. <laughs> Like, I would be so, I would probably come off as, like, such a bitch in those kind of communities. So they'd be like, oh, come out, go for drinks, like, hang out with everyone. And I'd be like, guys, I need to go to bed. I sang my songs. I did my dance. I need to go sleep now. <laughs> I do not want to go out and party and have drinks afterwards. I need to go to bed. Or it would be like, I could do that once a month. I'd be like, I would go out, go ham, party hard, live my rock star dreams, and then be like, I'm recovering for the whole month now. I could definitely see that being a thing. Okay, wow, look at that. Backstitching. To be fair, backstitching makes all projects pop. I think, Kat, you and I were talking about this, how it's like backstitching though now I think I'm gonna be able to see that fabric on the back there but it's fine but yeah back stitching on a cross stitch pattern makes things pop back stitching pop 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 you know yeah my agenda is a cozy couch with a good movie absolutely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely yeah again that's why and again Liam and I were reflecting when our meal at the restaurant was taking like over an hour to get to us like, oh yeah, why don't we go out anymore? And it's like, it's just, it's more enjoyable to like order takeout or make some really good food at home and then like watch TV, you know, or watch a movie at home together. We're definitely, yeah, we're both definitely home bots. And like, we like to like, you know, obviously like post pandemic, it's been a lot different. But, you know, we both, like, bonded over our love to travel and all that kind of stuff. But it's, like, but travel with always a goal of to come back to a homestead. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like, oh, yeah, I would like to travel and see the world but have, like, a home base to come back to. Like, there's people who, you know, are so almost, like, nomadic and that's amazing and good for them. But I'm, like, no, I couldn't, like, just live out of a suitcase for my entire life and just, like bop around from place to place and just be like yeah whatever like we just out here chilling no i'm like i will do that for like a week two weeks and then i need my routine and my structure and i need to go home and like do things right i also wonder too like those kinds of people that don't yeah like those people who are quite nomadic and love to travel and things like are they on medications like you know what i mean like i think of me who has you know like consistent medications that I take and how I need to like you know arrange getting my prescriptions filled and stuff like that and I'm like how do people who have these like live these nomadic lifestyles like how do they coordinate that <laughs> you know I'm like where, where am I getting my anti-anxiety meds when I'm roaming around the world she's not on anything yeah definitely like, I, I do think that that's like a precursor and to be fair even like as simple as like that's a thing for me when like when again like I was attempting to go out and like do the bar stuff and whatever like usually I just ended up DDing because it would cost too much for me to get a cab back to my house after going out and I didn't want to stay over at anyone's place like oh just crash on so-and-so's couch and I'm like well no like I need like I need to know if I'm going to be staying at someone's place because I got to bring my like my medication and I got to you know do all that kind of stuff like I have you know additional needs that's not me just like passing out somewhere on some at someone's house like there are things that need to be done preparations that need to be had um but yeah some people don't have that and I'm like good for you absolutely but yeah as much as it's like such a romanticized idea of like ooh, this like nomadic lifestyle traveling living your best life I'm like logistically I'm like first of all where am I gonna get my prescriptions refilled <laughs> I'm sure there's ways to do it but like that just seems complicated and then also now that you know I am obsessed with my dog I'm not gonna leave my dog to go on adventures it's only if he can come with me I think Liam and I like we like the idea of you know those people who do those like van conversions but the only problem is a lot of the van conversion people just make like 
doing their van conversion and living in a van like their entire personality which i get it when you're trying to like start a youtube channel being like we're the traveling van people you gotta have a brand you know you gotta have a thing and i respect that but mm, yeah see that's a thing that like people i know like and i know we have family that could like look after shadow and stuff like that but I never would assume that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you guys might have your own shit going on. You're like, what if I got stuff to, you know, I want to go out and do stuff. What if I want to travel? But I can't because you keep traveling and making me look after your dog. That just doesn't seem fair. But. Like, if I could take, to be fair, I've not tried. And I do think, like, for instance... My, um, when my parents are coming, they want to take, like, a day trip out to Greenwich and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, like, technically, I think Shadow is allowed on, like, the trains and stuff. Um, but I've never attempted to, like, take him on a train. So that might be something we try to do. Because then if we can do that, then he can be, like, a little city boy. But he can't be little because he's massive. So, I don't know. He's like, he's definitely like some, a dog that you need to kind of walk with two hands. So it's difficult to be like, oh, we're going to like go on a little London adventure with this dog. And he's like, uh, guys, I need, I need more than that. Aw, oh, he pees everywhere and is in a diaper. Wow. See, and then that sounds like, not being funny, but that sounds like, you know, he's not maybe been trained the best. But who knows? Like, I think maybe some dogs can be like that. But I remember, like, uh, Liam was talking to his co-worker because we both got dogs around the same time. And their dog was still, like, peeing and pooping in the house and stuff. And it's like, Shadow's not done that in such a long time. So I'm always like, why is that? Why? You know. She doesn't have time to do it. How old is the dog? I love that. And that's, it sounds like your cousin is similar to, like, what I would define as, you know, somebody with a dog versus a dog person. Because people who are dog people understand, like, the necessity of dogs are actually better off and happier and healthier if they know kind of what they're meant, what's expected of them, what they're meant to be doing. The dog is three. Yeah. He's, he, they're, he, they're set in their ways now, I think. I think you can teach old dogs new tricks, but, like, again, it's like with anything, the older they get, I'm sure the harder it is to do that. And then if you're not doing it at all, I don't know if it's going to happen. I guess, too, what's going to happen when you, when you and hubby move out? Like, Sawi, I can't watch your dog. I got my own place. Cause you have dogs too, eh? Are they your dogs or are they your your like family, like your mom's dogs? So it's like when you and when you and Chris move out, are you guys having dogs in your place? Yeah, absolutely. They are your dog. Yeah, they're your mom's dogs. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure. So she's already got dogs. Plus this other random dog. You just have to start looking into kennel situations, you know? It's like if you can afford to be nomadic and travel over the place, you got to be able to afford to, you know, put your dog in a kennel. We, we, didn't, we had to do it with my family dog um, growing up because we didn't have any family to look after her. Um, luckily, we found this kennel who they really like, like that really liked her and she seemed to like it there, but she hated car rides. Um, I would take Gus yeah. My dog is as old as moldy cheese. <laughs> That's amazing. Honestly though, like I, Shadow and I went to the field the other day and we saw this little dog that was 12 and still had a little bit of pep in their step. It was actually really sweet. Shadow was like act, like acting an absolute fool, bouncing around trying to get this little dog to chase them. And I was like, dude, he's not gonna chase you. Absolutely not. But the dog was still like wagging his tail and was like following Shadow around. But like, obviously they know 
a lot of the dogs will like look at him and be like, wow, look at you. And then Shadow takes off and they go, ah, you're a fast boy. I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> Every once in a while, he does have a challenger, but he doesn't like it. When I took him to the field on the Friday, there's this dog walker that we run into sometimes and she has, I don't know, I think this dog must be a lurcher as well. Um, but every time I would go to the field with Shadow, they would already be finishing their walk. And so we finally caught them when they were on route to their walk as well. And it was like, oh wow, like we know two fast boys, like they can play with each other and stuff like that, right? So we get to the field, I take Shadow off lead and then this woman takes this dog off lead. And the dog kind of, you know, runs over to Shadow and Shadow sort of takes off a little bit, but like you can tell Shadow is having none of it. He's like, I do not want to play with this other fast boy. I don't think I like him. Cause usually I take Shadow off lead and he's like so excited. He zooms off. He's like having a great time. He's keeping really close to me and is like, mom, I don't want to run yet. I don't, I don't know. And so I was like, oh, I don't know if he's, and then of course too, Shadow likes when I throw his ball. He never actually like really, Sometimes he'll actually like take it and bring it back, but a lot of times he just kind of chases the ball. Like I throw it and he uses it as an excuse to race after the ball. But of course, because he's not super toy driven, if he'll just like drop the ball and wander off because he's found something to smell or he like will run past it and be like, whatever, like I don't really care. So then other dogs who are ball motivated will then run over and take the ball. And I'm like, and then the owners feel really bad. And I'm like, honestly, it's Shadow's own damn fault. He doesn't protect his toys. Um, so this, again, this other lurcher dog had the ball and, you know, they were able to get it back, but then this dog wanted me to throw it again. And of course this woman was like trying to, you know, we were sort of like, okay, our dogs don't really want to play with each other. That's fine. You know, come this way. But the dog was like, oh my God, no, throw the ball. And he started like jumping up at me. It wasn't hurting me or whatever. It was fine. But the woman was mortified, eh? She was like, you're acting like an absolute, like, psycho. You know, making us look bad sort of thing. But I think, because I was talking to Liam about this. And I was like, well, she's a dog walker, right? So she's not responsible for the training of the dog. She obviously, like, knows enough about the dogs and has like been walking them for however long and stuff but it's like at the end of the day if the dog is misbehaving like yeah i guess that is on her but also part of that is probably the actual training that the dog has gone through but yeah, i just thought it was funny but then after the dog had a bit of a walk he had calmed down and so we saw them again and i think shadow had also chilled so they were like you know actually just sniffing each other and saying hello and she even said to this dog like oh my god you finally calmed down like you're not acting like an absolute idiot in the middle of the field anymore and I'm like honestly it's fine like don't worry about it this part looks kind of weird uh, no I think it's fine it's like sort of scalloped but then it ends actually maybe I want to fix it I'm not sure but yeah but yeah so shadow definitely like shadow absolutely prefers smaller dogs he prefers dogs that because I think genuinely too, I do think he thinks he's a small lap dog. He has zero interest for other greyhounds, other whippets, like other sight hounds. He's like, I do not know them. I do not care. I do not know them. And I'm like, okay, why? <laughs> you know, like, okay, sure, whatever. But yeah, and then every once in a while, he'll come across like a small dog that can kind of keep up with him and he doesn't know what to do about it. But he loves to be a good 10 feet away from dogs at all times. And then too, like when we were doing this walk, we then went into a meadow, which is sort of beside the field. And we found this like big floofy white dog and Shadow comes bumbling over and he's like all excited and saying hi and stuff. And this dog is barking at him cause he's like, okay, like I wanna maybe play and stuff. And Shadow's 10 feet away and then starts doing the like zoomies around this dog. And the dog's just like, okay, are we playing or not? Like what's going on? And he's like, I don't know, can't talk right now, like doing the zoomies. And I'm like, God damn Shadow, like the dogs, I always, and then I apologize to the dogs. I'm like, I'm so sorry. He's being so antisocial. He doesn't actually want to say hi. My apologies. <laughs> I bet I can keep up with him. Yeah, honestly, some of the little dogs, they really do put in the effort and I applaud them for it. Yeah, I definitely think we needed, so there wasn't another scalloped section here but i feel like it kind of needed to happen just to kind of secure this little area here okay and then 
This is a bit of a rough edge, but it's like they're kind of angled a bit. And so I think that's fine. Sort of off to the side. It's all good now. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Remember how I was like, we're going to get girly fully backstitched. That does not seem to be the case. We only got five minutes left. Time flies when you are congested <laughs> and we're learning how to embroider, but that's all right. Hopefully next time we are back here, I will be able to breathe again. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll continue this. And then we have so many projects to choose from when we finally reach the end of craft kit time. We got so many outstanding cross stitch whips. We have, you know, needle felting ideas. We have bead jewelry making ideas. Like there's so many options. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it so far. I definitely like, I don't know. It almost seems like embroidery. I think there's like obviously difficult stitches but I like the kind of simplicity of it where you're kind of just like drawing out a shape and then filling it in. I really like that. This is supposed to be a bat on here, but what's been stitched on here is very like butterfly vibes. We might have to try to fix that when we actually go in and backstitch that. <laughs> but yeah. So far, not too bad, not too bad at all. So if anybody had any raid suggestions, let me know. If not, we'll see which one of our friends is currently online. And we will go give them a grand hello. Hi! Hi, 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 Aurora! How are you? Are you having the most fabulously wonderful day today? Yeah, no, of course. Well, you're busy. You've got stuff going on. Guys, if you don't know, Aurora's little Bubba, it's his birthday today. Little Bubba is now two. He's two. Which is honestly wild. It's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. And on Pancake Day, no less, you know? Like, lots of exciting things. <laughs> I don't know if it matters. I've fully been like, he's like, ah, <laughs> definitely. I'm sure he's been super happy, giggly smiles all day. He's honestly like such a happy boy, such a happy boy. Okay. Yeah. I'm not worrying so much about like the black threads popping up through the canvas. I don't know. Maybe I should, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not that concerned about it, but we'll see. We'll see what happens when I frame it. It could be that it shows up a lot more and is a bit of a problem, but we'll see. So we'll finish this um, outline and then yeah, we'll, we'll write out. We'll find, we'll find a friend. Hopefully, well, not hopefully, we will continue this on Thursday. And hopeful, the hopefully part of that statement is that I will not be congested anymore. <laughs> the plan is to, to be better. So far, so good. Here, I'll show you. We actually, so we did all of our test stitches earlier. So we tested our back stitch, which I knew. Satin stitch, French knot. I had to re-remember how to French knot, which was a bit of a problem. I was having a bit of a meltdown. Um, but I figured it out in the end. And then, yeah, the short and long stitch, fishbone stitch, and the lazy daisy, I think is really cute. I'm really excited about this part. Fishbone stitch, I think the leaves are quite small, so it should be all right. Um, this one I'm interested to, I think now that I have like the flower to kind of feed into it, it'll be quite interesting and quite nice. Um, but yeah, so that was our practice round and we learned lots, but now, I think we're just doing all the back stitching, which is the part that I have the most like knowledge of. So, so far it's going quite well, which is good. But yeah, I know I'm so annoyed. But yeah, I took, um, I took a COVID test 
obviously just to make sure luckily thank goodness it's not it's not the rona which is nice but it still sucks i'm still not happy about it um i've been trying i've been hoping and praying that liam doesn't end up getting ill i've been like trying to you know say to sit far away from him on one side of the sofa and he's on the other shadow's usually in the middle anyway um just because it's not fun but yeah i picked up some actually i got carded today at the grocery store so shadow had a groom today and while he was getting groomed i did some grocery shopping and i picked up some sudafed i just picked up you know some sudafed some ibuprofen i'm like picking up all the drugs and then the woman scans the sudafed and then looks at me and i had a mask on because i was like i don't want to give all the old biddies at the grocery store my lurgies and she's like, oh, can you pull your mask down for me? And so I pull my mask down. And she's like, I'm going to need to see some ID, love. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I promise you, I am a full adult. So, you know, apparently I looked under 20. I think it's under 21 when they, if they suspect that you're under 21, they need to card you. I think that's the one. But yeah. So I guess, you know, if you would like to look this young and youthful, have a potential sinus infection for a few days <laughs> yeah maybe they're just like oh what what does that face look like <laughs> and i'm like it looks like someone who can't breathe out of her face but yeah so that was really funny i don't know i don't like i don't get offended either way you know what i mean they're like oh i need to see some id and i'm like i promise you it is me and I need these because I can't breathe. <laughs> She's very nice though. I just thought that was really funny. She was like so perplexed. She was like, okay, pull your mask down, pull my mask down. She was like, mm, no, unconvinced. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Could you imagine? Yeah, I probably, I wonder if I would have done that. Yeah. I get my old voice back when I'm sick. Yeah. Oh, really? Your voice trying to get your tonsils out. Interesting. That's interesting. Did it get like deeper, higher? I always find when I'm not feeling well. But to be fair, it's less the congestion, but sometimes it happens where you're like, oh, I sound like I've, you know, smoked a pack a day. I've not gotten that, which is nice. Because apparently I was like 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that's, that makes sense. Because your tonsils are inflamed all the time, possibly. I like my husky. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes when you get sick and you're just like, damn, like I sound like a bluesy jazz singer right now. But no. My dolls are so swim all the time. Yeah. Wow. I'm surprised. Could you not really breathe and swallow then? My sister-in-law was talking about, I think a friend of hers or a coworker or something who's constantly getting like tonsillitis and stuff as an adult. And she's like, please, for the love of God, remove my tonsils. And they're like, mm well you know like it's a pretty big surgery we're not sure and it's like no please yeah so no yeah i don't know i don't know if i've had i've had like inflamed tonsils and stuff but i don't know like what pushes it over to like oh your your tonsils are a bit swollen <laughs> That's the thing. I think that's what it is. Like, they'll try really hard not to do it because it, I think it's like with anything, right? But, I'm not sure but about that, you know. I'm not wow. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I remember when we were in like senior kindergarten. So we were like, what? I want to say like six, five or six. And there was a kid in our classmate, in our class, a classmate of ours who um, had his tonsils out. And then we all like drew him a get well soon card and stuff. And then everyone kept like, cause I think he was a bit nervous and our teacher was like, don't worry, you just get to eat ice cream all week while you recover. And it was like, oh, okay. And I think that made him feel better. Cause he was like, cool. And that was like always the thing. It's like, you get your tonsils out, you get to just eat ice cream all the time. And that was like to a kid that sounded amazing. I was like, what do you mean? Yeah, but apparently, like, that's the right age. Like, when you're, like, a child, like a toddler. Yeah, apparently ice cream. Because you need something, like, cool to help with the swelling and stuff, probably. Okay. So, we have... Okay. 
Oh, you weren't allowed. Postman. Yeah. You couldn't suck on the delivery. That's interesting. I have like ice cube. Yeah. <laughs> Auto mod was like, um, you doing what with those popsicles? And you're like, um, I was not doing that with those popsicles. That was the problem. I guess because you couldn't probably do anything that required your like throat muscles. You know what I mean? Because things were like. That's interesting. Yeah, Automod is really funny sometimes. It makes me giggle what they want to, to tell me we can't use. Okay, so we got an arm and you know a scalloped, a scalloped uh, crop top. So far, it's not bad. Yeah, broth and soup. That's yeah, that's what I've been doing actually. I've been drinking a lot of like chicken stock, stock cubes and things, just because it's like warm and I assume like the sodium levels. Because there was that old wives' tale about like when you don't feel well, you should drink like bone broth and chicken noodle soup and stuff. And so I've been doing a lot of that. But yeah. So here's where we're at. Does anybody have any suggestions? And I am, once again, so congested. <laughs> but again, hopefully by Thursday, we will be back in action. Again, like I said, it usually takes me about a week when I get ill to like start feeling myself again. Um, my throat started feeling scratchy on Wednesday, but I was like full blown, like ill, ill on Friday. So hopefully between the two in the next couple of days, I should hopefully turn a corner. That's, that's what I'm hoping at least. Ha oh, damn. We got so many friends online. What's going on? We got Bex. We got Sutherland. We got Makerbug. We got Soul. Ooh, Makerbug's making a high what is it? A DIY high contrast sensory book. She's doing baby stuff. Yeah, exactly, right? It's like just, it's just all the faves. Just all the oldies but goodies. Yeah, so we'll see what this is. She's making a... Yeah, a sensory book. So I'm intrigued by that. So we should go and investigate with what that is. <laughs> So we'll do that and then like I said, hopefully, well, we will be back here on Thursday, but hopefully with a Tasha that can breathe better. <laughs> and then I will see you guys then. We'll go see her, see what she's up to. And I gotta start making pancakes cause you know, it's pancake day today. I bought a mix guys, I cheated. I bought a pancake mix just for funsies. Um, We'll see if Liam notices the difference. <laughs> okay, bye!